It's homecoming 2023, Raylan Field University Stadium. It's the Crusaders of North Greenville. It's the West Georgia Wolves here on UWG Productions. It's going to be a great night. The hills rocking. The students are rocking. The campus is buzzing. The city of dreams of Carrollton is being the city of dreams of Carrollton here on a Saturday night. And we are looking forward to some college football being played here in just a moment. Hello, everyone. Once again, from University Stadium, I'm Matt Skinner. Alongside Ben Walters, we'll have Cade Perrion, the third member of our crew on the sidelines here in just a moment. Ben, we've started out strong and fast the last two weeks. Has not been able to carry through the rest of the game. And Coach Dean definitely talked about that this week in our press conference. Doesn't want any more bookings. He wants to complete 48 or, I guess, 60 minutes. Can we get that tonight? Yes, I think this is the game you put everything together and just show how dominant you can be because we show it. We just don't show it enough consistently. And I think that West Georgia should do that today. Well, something to help is going to be these great kids that are going to be cheering for us tonight with Wolfie and the cheerleaders. But a guy that's been incredible for us is Keandre Williams. He's definitely going to be our player to watch tonight. He's been so much fun to watch. He's our leading tackler, 37 tackles on the season. I think he's third in the conference in sacks. And the, the junior for Metter is having a career year. Yes, he is getting better and better every week. And you're like, how much, how come, how much can, he, can he improve? I mean, Keandre Williams is that guy for us on defense. He brings that, that just that physicality for us. And Keandre is going to have to have a big game tonight. Him and Mason Huntley are two bookends. It would be nice for them to have a great night tonight for the Wolves. Go to the other side. We played these guys twice last year. North Greenville, a very scrappy, good football team. Uh, coach Farrington does a great job. He was a former coach here uh, and, and – uh, worked in the past and their guy to go to is Dylan Ramirez their quarterback third in the conference in passing as you talked about earlier me and you were going back and forth uh, from Cal Penn South Carolina completes about 55 percent of his passes 56 percent and has uh, had a great year for the Crusaders yes Dylan is a guy that you see him come in as a freshman he dominated he's getting better and better and this year he's that kind of player that you cannot let him get comfortable if he gets into a rhythm, it's going to be really dangerous, especially with a running back like Corey Watkins. If he, those two are able to do what they, what they usually do, the Wolves can't be in trouble. Well, as well as we just heard, the Wolves won the toss. They're going to defer. So we'll see Dylan Ramirez and the North Greenville folks. It's homecoming, folks. Nothing better than kids and cheerleaders leading us out onto the field. We'll have kickoff, starting lineups, and more when we come back right here on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me Appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Welcome back in our honorary captain today, uh, Sonny Purdue, Chancellor here at the University System of Georgia, walking with uh, Dr. Brendan Kelly 
and a lot of uh, great folks. You see Bob Uglum, a city of uh, Carrollton council member. So great uh, to have Mr. Sonny Purdue in the house today to watch a Wolves win on homecoming, Ben. That's our goal. And Keandre Williams is ready. He'll come out onto the field first to help us play some defense along with our probable starters of Malcolm Mercer, Abu Bangura, Mason Huntley on that defensive line, Amos Dawn, Xavier Robinson getting the starts today at linebacker, we think. And then in the back end, Kamayan Fagans and Jet Lee are your corners. Jabron Claude, Kel Bright, your safeties, and Deontay Overstreet is your stud position, kind of the star position to some defenses. But why call it a star when you can call it a stud? And as we see, the wind is already playing a factor. Let's go ahead and go down to the third member of our broadcast crew, Cade Perry. And Cade, how's that wind already playing an effect, ain't it? The wind is definitely blowing from the home side to the visitor side, but it feels good down here. About three quarters of the field is in shade, a little bit more to go. Students are piling in. They're swaying just like the wind, but I don't think it's from the wind. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. It is homecoming. Got a little Kate. Uh, yeah, man, absolutely. End over end kick. Tyler Davalos will send it three yards deep into the end zone for a touchback, and we are underway. And what a great way to start. Make him start from the 25-yard line. We see Brock Pellegrino in that last shot. He is in street clothes, dealing with a groin injury, so it will be Tyler Davalos do, doing all the kicking duties. And now we'll see the Dylan Ramirez-led North Greenville Crusader offense. And we talked about Dylan Ramirez, but let's not forget Corey Watkins. He's one of the top running backs in the league as well. He was last year, and here in his uh, senior season, he's had a great year so far as well. Yes, Corey Watkins is fourth in the conference, I think, in rushing. So, yeah, he's he's going to be a big part of the offense today as well. They're pretty – they look like they have an athletic offensive line, a little yes. bit more <laughs> athletic than what we saw last week with Chawan. They send a tight end in motion to come back to the set. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They'll hand it to Watkins, and we eat him up in the backfield. Mason Huntley, and we're going to have a flag, a late flag come in. He – uh, Mason hit him in the backfield. He was able to get two yards. That just goes to show you how strong Watkins is because he hit him a yard behind the line. Let's see what the flag is. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, well. number eight. 15 yard penalty is added to the run. Automatic first down. There you hear our referee, Brian Detweiler, and they Get Mason Huntley, who was our player spotlight this week, on uh, on a face mask. So tough start for the Wolves defensively. And it'll go to the 42-yard line. It'll be first down for the Crusaders. Pistol formation, tight left. Receivers to two to the right, one to the left. They'll fake it and throw it out to the slot guy. We miss a tackle. Overstreet does. But then here come the rest of the Calvary. Jabron, Claude, and uh, Xavier Robinson run, run them out of bounds. That was number two on the catch. They got double numbers, so got to make sure uh, that was Dre Williams on the catch uh, for uh, the Crusaders. He's listed as number two on the roster, but number 22 on the uh, depth chart. We're going to say that's Dre Williams. Okay. Three receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. A running back. It's second down and six to go. Ball at the 46-yard line. They hand it to Corey Watkins. He goes untouched to the West Georgia 45. Ball comes out, and we'll have it. Ball came out, got punched from behind by Xavier Robinson. Deontay Overstreet picks it up at the 29-yard line, and West Georgia will have it first down. Great. That's a great and great IQ and great play by Xavier Robinson just to punch that ball out. He knew he couldn't make the tackle. He went for the ball. That was a great, great job by him. They ran the counter, it looked like, Ben, and they just followed the guard. And luckily, Xavier Robinson punched it out. If not, it would have been about an 18-yard gain. Yes. And uh, it would have been a, a huge gain for North Greenville. Instead, a turnover, which Coach Dean stressed, we got to have turnovers uh, to give our offense a couple more drives. And here we go. We do it now. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Wesley Kennedy stands beside Cam Brown. Four down linemen for the Crusaders. First and 10 in their own 30-yard line. Cam going to throw it out to Wesley Kennedy. He makes the catch, makes a man miss, and then gets knocked across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Big hit by number 11, D. Brown. Nice play by D from the backside. I tell you what, there's one lady out there that's having a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It's her homecoming. She's it, ready. Yes. Two receivers to the right. One receiver left. Tight right. Brown throws it out to T. Cole right into the sun. And T. Cole never real. I don't think he, he caught it. He lost a yard. Tackle by Cam Watson. That's tough. Throwing right yeah. into that sun. And it took him a second to kind of regain his vision, I think. Looking from what I saw, I don't think he actually saw the ball. I, yeah. He knew it was coming to him, but I don't think he yeah. saw the ball. He caught it with his uh, shoulder pads. Yes. He didn't catch it with his hands. And knowing T. Cole, he usually, that's all he uses is his hands. So that shows you that he couldn't see that ball. So third down, and they're going to call it 11. We lost two. Brown looking, looking, has time. Now going to step up and run. Cam Brown, 35-40, 45-47 yard line before he's taken down from behind by uh, Jermonta Brisbane, the senior linebacker. First down, West Georgia, and that's what Cam Brown can do. Yes, Cam Brown, that, that's the best thing for him right now as far as like just getting out of trouble and creating, and pre, and creating plays for himself. So first and 10, West Georgia ball at the 48-yard line, 12.25 to go here in quarter number one. We'll send two receivers to the right, one to the left. Tight left with Zach Obi. Here we go. Brown going to throw it quickly out here to T. Cole across midfield. And a nice open field tackle. His jersey's all scrunched up. Looks like... Uh, Cam Watson again, or uh, yeah, it looks like Cam Watson again out there. But nonetheless, a three-yard gain. An extension, uh, thank you, uh, UWG Productions. That's number eight, and that is uh, Kendrick Clark. They'll hand it to Kennedy across midfield. He goes, makes a man miss, 45, 40, up to the 38. And a, a couple of Crusaders will bring him down at the 36-yard line, and that'll be good enough for a West Georgia first down. We're starting strong today, Matt. We are starting strong. They are, the West Georgia was looking good on this offensive drive right now. Let's not forget, though, that we've started strong the first offensive series yes. virtually every game this season. <laughs> yes, we have. for it to not fizzle out but completely go out. Yeah. Yes, you are right, Cade. And that's what we were we – are, they are preaching. Coach Dean wants the guys to be able to keep this consistent. So let's see if we can do this today. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Michael Tubbs, a single receiver to the left. We go tight left with Zach Obi Brown with T. Cole wide open, caught it at the 30. He's at the 25-20, and T. Cole will step out of bounds. They're going to say he stepped out at the 20, uh, and that's where it will be a first and 10. West Georgia pick up a 14. We are rolling here. Here on UWG Productions, Clark knocked him out of bounds. Also in pressure was, uh, looks like Shane Monsanto. Monsanto, excuse me. Rajay's Mosley in the ball game now. We'll hand it to him up the middle across the 15 to the 13-yard line. Seven yards for the Gold South Conference leader in yards per carry. Rajay's to the 13. I found our uh, our cheering uh, lady down there, too. Is that, a, is, is that Ben's own personal fan <laughs> club I don't out here? know. <laughs> I don't know. I see her screaming by the road bike, though. <laughs> Brown looking to throw right side, and he'll have to just tuck it and get sacked. Note, they ate that up on the right side. And then number 33, Zach Jordan, the sophomore linebacker, nobody touched him on the left side and came through and sacked Cam Brown at the 18-yard line. A loss of five, it'll be third and eight, Ben. And here's the UWG Productions instant replay. Yeah, it was definitely some miscommunication between the left guard and the left tackle right there, Austin Donaldson and Brevin Jones. Um, oh, no, that's uh, Jalen Moore and Brevin Jones. Yep. So they got to get that cleaned up. Third and eight, trips to the right, one receiver to the left. Mosley beside Cam Brown. We're looking at Michael Tubbs the whole way. Tubbs, did he catch it? He did! Touchdown, Wolves! In and out and back in to Michael Tubbs, left side. Great defense by the Crusaders. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, man. Yes, that was great concentration by, um, by that guy, man. That's a great job. It's just a way to pull that ball in and just keep his eyes on it. Man. Michael Tubbs saw that in the whole way right there, and the Wolves, they've done it again. 
<laughs> Another drive, nine plays and 70 yards. Davalos will kick the PAT. High snap handled very nicely by Hogan. And Davalos puts it through. 9.37 to go, quarter number one. Wolves lead seven to nothing right here on UWG Productions. Look at this great replay. Boom. Great play by Tubbs with Kate Perry and throwing his hands up. <laughs> or hall are you with? I'm a freshman and I'm with University Suites. We're at at B -B <laughs> I'm here with the Villages, the Kappa Alpha Order. The one and only all review. How has your experience been at uh, Battle of the Hall so far? It's been good, very loud, love the spirit. Listen, the energy is high and it is crazy out here. So if you haven't been, you got to make sure you come. It's been good. We just won that last game. Oh my gosh, it was so crazy. All right, and what event were you guys just doing just now? So we just did a tug of war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it got a little heated and they were pulling and then the rope just snapped. It was it was crazy. Can you show us the evidence right there? Yeah, so. <laughs> <clears throat> um, this is half of the rope. You know, it was a lot of alpha male energy over there. Um, we didn't expect that. We were just running it back, but you know, we just too strong. We lift. Welcome to the pack. 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 A nine play 70 yard drive, Ben, on the first possession of the ball game for the Wolves has us leading seven to nothing. I don't know what was more impressive, the Michael Tubbs catch or Cade Perry is jumping up and putting his arms up. Probably Cade jumping, <laughs> man. It's got to be Cade getting in the air for a little bit. Great, great play by all. We'll kick it deep to the two-yard line. They'll return it, and Deontay Overstreet makes the stop. Ball came out, but I think he was down. They recovered anyways, but Deontay Overstreet Having a great season for the Wolves, and he did it again right there as I think it was 27 on the return. Ryan Cheatham. Yes, Deontay looked like a missile once he went for that tackle. He came in really fast and forced the fumble, but we didn't, they didn't get to recover it. But that was a great job by that young man. There we go. Crusaders moved the ball pretty well on their first drive. Xavier Robinson got a forced fumble. Here we go with Micah Thurman and Amos Don in on the second uh, drive, so no Xavier Robinson on the field. We go same starters in the backfield and or in the back end and up front as well. Bringing a man in motion, that's Dre Williams. Ramirez will take the snap, fake it, looking to throw on the run, and it's complete to the 30. No, he's dropped it. He dropped it. In and out of the hands, Jabron clawed in coverage for the Wolves. Great job by him and number eight was he uh, Kendrick Clark or no that's uh is that nine that's nine pull your jersey down there it is Cameron Walker yes. made the uh drop Jabron Clark is another guy that's been playing really good on the defense this year too man he's been he's been quiet but he's been making some big plays for us as well seven to nothing nine twenty two to go here in quarter number one We go with uh, the Crusaders sending a guy shuffling across the formation. Two receivers left, one to the right. We'll hand to Watkins up the middle. Maybe got two yards. He's met by a host of Wolves. I see Abu Bangura in there, Amos Don in there, Mason Huntley in there, Mason using the patented Malcolm Mercer finger wag. 
I got to get on to Malcolm. What's up with the sleeves? It ain't that cold outside, Malcolm. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> he, Malcolm is a different guy. When it's cold outside, you know, he wears he, he wears no sleeves. When it's warm, he wears sleeves. So well, I know some coaches have rules about sleeves and not sleeves. Really? Uh, if, if the coach says, if I ain't wearing sleeves, you ain't wearing sleeves. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Two receivers to each side, third and eight. Snap to Ramirez, we bring a blitz. Amos Don with a sack. They brought pressure from the backside and from straight up the middle with Amos Don, and they had no way to block. They brought more than they could block, basically, and they did not have time. Ramirez goes down and time to punt for the Crusaders. Yes, that's a great job by the West Georgia defense and Amos Dunn coming in hot and putting pressure on Dylan Ramirez. They have to do that all game today, Matt, just to keep him um, uncomfortable in that pocket. Zay Britt will be back to receive the, the kick, and the punter is Lance Calcutt. The senior six-footer, if I can remember, the same one from last year. He's not a bad little punter. And he put a good punt on it, and it takes a West Georgia roll. Now it takes a North Greenville roll across midfield to the 49-yard line, and that's where we'll set up shot first and 10. But we'll have Kev Hemfield run onto the field. That means it's time to take a media timeout. 7.48 to go. Wolves lead 7-0. Back after this. your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Great homecoming crowd, as you can see, and homecoming always brings a good crowd to the University of West Georgia. And Raylan Field, two receivers to the right, one left, tight left. We look for a double move, can't get it. Cam Brown will take off and run and get as much as he can. Gets two yards to the 49-yard line. It will be second down and eight, Ben. And, uh, you know, we were talking during the break, you know, West Georgia still has everything in front of them, especially with West Florida losing last week. Delta and West Florida playing right now. Delta up 21 to 10 in the third quarter on West Florida. Wow. So uh, something to keep an eye out on tonight. A lot to play for still in the season, guys. Yes, the GSE right now is up for grass yep. for a lot of teams. Yep, absolutely. Well, no fake it to Rajay's Mosley. Throw the slant across the middle, and Tubbs can't make the grab. Good physical defense by the, the corner, uh, number 15 for them, E.J. Bradford. And it'll be third and eight. For Tubbs, it'll be third down. Trey Williams and Zach Obi will come out. Javen West and LP will come in. We're still on that LP watch. Yes, we've been on the LP watch for <laughs> the past, since week two, I think. Yeah, I feel like it. 
He needs uh, 62 more all-purpose yards to get to 3,000. Brown looking. He's got Rajay's Mosley. Wide open out of the backfield. Call it 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15. Made a man this in. Five. Touchdown. Wolves. Rajay's Mosley. Holy smokes. He hit a gear I didn't know he had. I'm, I'm sitting here saying the same thing. Rajay just hit third gear. Well, we knew he was a great all-around all oh, back, but man. that was true speed. I'm not going to lie. I was not expecting a touchdown out of that play, but Rod James proves us all wrong. Here's the replay. Just a simple wheel round out of the backfield. Nobody went with him. Well, they did. They just got beat, and then whoop. And that's the second time this season we've scored on a wheel route out of the backfield from a running back, too. Guess what? We've scored on two straight drives to start the ball game. And I said, you can't say anything <laughs> until it happens. So there you go. Tyler Davalos puts it up and in. It's good on a third and eight nonetheless. How about West Georgia? Rajay's Mosley, the senior from Valdosta. I wish we could have got the speed on that play, Matt. <laughs> Excuse me, the junior from Valdosta, who if you didn't see his mic'd up last week, he was phenomenal on the mic'd up with uh, UWG Athletics, you can check it out on their Facebook page and their Twitter page. You're definitely going to laugh if you, if you watch that video, yeah. too. It was a great <laughs> job by Rod Jason and our UWG production staff. So how about uh, Cam Brown? Six, six out of seven for 85 yards to start with two touchdowns. We just went nine, uh, three plays and 51 yards. It's a great start for the Wolves. Got to keep it going. Got to keep it going, but I know Coach Dean is real proud right now how the team has started out this game in the first quarter. Just took 49 seconds off the clock. We heard Patrick Gitson say, 6.54 to go, and here we go. Davalos will tee it up. We'll get an end over end kick, hopefully, and Back deep for them. They've got 24, and that's who we'll, they'll kick it to. Jarek Foster will take it from the three. Foster 10, 15, 20, across the 20, and then met by, look like Zach O.B. maybe, I'm looking at him. I couldn't see who made that tackle, but Deontay, Deontay yep. Overstreet just ran through number 44. He did. Oh my goodness. He did, Zach O.B. made the stop, but Deontay Overstreet definitely assisted with some some violence there. 6.47, quarter number one. North Greenville will try to, they had a great first drive and then Xavier Robinson decided to, you know, knock the ball out. And they've been flat ever since. Yeah, so we'll see what this West Georgia Wolves defense who really you take out the West Florida game has been spectacular this year on defense. Bringing a man in motion towards the line of scrimmage is Williams. They'll hand it to a running back. Uh, that's their backup. Looks like number 21, uh, Ezekiel Mays. Ezekiel Mays gets a gain of one. Second and nine. Host of Wolves bring him down. Xavier Robinson, Jalen Tarver back in there. Jeremy Smith in there for Deontay Overstreet on this uh, playing that stud position. Mays will go in motion outside. They'll throw it to the slot guy to the 30. And big job throwing him down. Xavier Robinson drops the hammer at the 29 and throws him four to the 30. So it will be third down and a long three, Ben. Ooh, Xavier Robinson <laughs> brought the hammer. Brought, he, he brought everything with that tackle just then. Ramirez got it out to Cameron Walker. And it will be third down and three. Let's see if the Wolves can get off the field here. We jump, gonna be a free play. Ramirez going long and will be incomplete. Intended for Walker, but we jumped off sides and they should have it first and 10 at the 35. Five yard penalty, clock results in the first down. Like she said. Get it, West Georgia, get it. <laughs> I heard that. Get on them. <laughs> Got to love our fans at West Georgia. Got to love them, Matt. At the two receivers to each side. 
This is uh, Corey Watkins back in the ball game at running back. Ramirez will take the snap, pitch it out to Watkins, and they didn't block Jordan Clark, but he missed the tackle. And then looked like Trey Douglas made the stop. And I tell you what, Trey Douglas has uh, played really, really well the last couple of weeks. Yes, he has. He stepped up. I think we all went. Mike Merriweather was out for a little while. He's definitely stubbed up and played good at that safety position for, for West Georgia. Jordan Clark was the first to hit him, but Douglas made the stop after a five-yard gain. It'd be trips to the left, tight right. That's a big tight end. Uh, Cole Richardson. Or excuse me, that's A.J. Tolbert, the backup tight end. They'll hand to Watkins again, right side. We miss another tackle. And then finally, Jordan Clark takes him out. Jalen Tarver couldn't bring him down. And then, oh, man. There's no Watkins, flag. Watkins just threw a uh, nice hand to uh, Jordan Clark, but it might have been a nice acting job as well. Yeah. But Jordan, he, I mean, Corey Watkins is showing that yeah. he, oh, he's he, a really good back, and yeah. it's going to take more than one player to get him down. Yeah. I'm telling you, he, he can really make some plays back there. Talking with Coach Dean, he is a, a huge, a huge guy to, to, to contain. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. We bring extra pressure. They're going to throw it. Deep ball looking for Williams, and Dre Williams couldn't come up with it. A little past him. Good defense by Deontay Overstreet. Anthony Rochester was in the vicinity. We brought, what, six guys on that play? Yes, we brought both linebackers and then, of course, the entire D-line, so we have the entire box. Here comes big Jalen Miller in the ball game. That's your guy. Yeah, Jalen Miller has also played really well um, this uh, these past couple of weeks as well. He blocked the he blocked the kick last week, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, we got Jalen Brown, Keandre Williams in there, Brian Rice. All those guys have played really really well for us, and that's why we've been able to rotate so many guys. Yes. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Ramirez is going to run quarterback power up the middle. He's going to get close to a first down marker. Eric Williams will check back in. Keandre Williams made the stop, but it was down 10 yards in a first down Crusaders. They got something going here on their third drive of the ball game. Yeah, that's something rare to see is uh, the quarterback power, but he definitely got yeah. those 10 yards, and he looked pretty comfortable doing and it as well. Go, they're going quickly. They snap it quick for the first time really tonight and maybe get a yard. They'll hand it off uh, to, that's 21 for them, um, Ezekiel Mays. Brian Rice and company in on the stop. Second and nine. Trips, three receivers left, one to the right. We get another break in the action. I want to go down to Cade because it looks like it's getting a little chippy down there. You know, Cade hears everything, so I can't wait to see what Cade's going to say right now. Bringing uh, Mays out of the backfield. We're going to rush him. Brian Rice can't get him. Ramirez is going to take off and run. And Jet Lee makes the stop. But another first down for Ramirez. And, Cade, it's been getting kind of chippy down there, hasn't it? I'd say it's getting chippy. I can't really repeat any of the things that are said. But, hey, this a homecoming game. Lots of passion. Lots of first. We got a. We, we scored on the second offensive possession. And guess what? I jumped for the first time in 25 years. <laughs> How are your knees feeling, Kate? I, I'm still out of breath. <laughs> Tight left, two receivers right, one to the left. First and ten, Crusaders. They're going to throw it out quick to Dre Williams, and Jordan Clark will make the stop up to the 25-yard line. A gain of four, second and six. Ramirez and Watkins. Dynamic backfield for the Crusaders, leading them on a drive right now that has already eclipsed nine plays. Balls on the ground, bad snap it looked like, and Keandre Williams will hand it off to Corey Watkins. And, guys, we got to tackle him. Corey Watkins is going to run <laughs> near a first down marker. you got to be kidding me. Yeah, he turned a negative play and just he took off and turned to a positive play. That was a great job by Corey Watkins, but West Georgia has got oh to take advantage of plays like that. A lot of our guys gave up on that play. That ball got snapped backwards and – it's only going to go down as, what, a three- or four-yard game, but he ran about 15 yards. Yes. There's a low snap. Watkins picked it up at the 37-yard line and ran it all the way down to the 21. They give it back to Watkins, and down he goes. Demetrius Lofton makes the stop. He didn't get it. It's going to be fourth down and one. Great job by Demetrius Lofton. That's another guy that didn't play as much yeah. last week. I wonder. I, I still haven't heard anything about what happened, but – 
He didn't come in until the fourth quarter. Yeah. Well, it's fourth down. North Greenville keeping their offense on the field. Coach Jeff Farrington wants to go for it. And Watkins is coming out of the game. And they'll go with Ezekiel Mays. Looks like they're going to hold it and call timeout because they're running out. Well, no, now they're going to go quick. They got three seconds on the play clock. Two, one, takes the snap. Going to be quarterback power up the middle. And Ramirez got it. Got it for a gain of, they're still trying to figure out how many yards it got to the 16 yard line. Malcolm, uh, no, that's a Boo Bangura and Jalen Tarver in on the stop. Amos Don will check in. First down, Crusaders. And they want to go quick again. That's what's been working for them so far, Matt, is going with his quick game. And now they jump. We jump off sides. They got a man wide open in the end zone. And good defense, good recovery by Jordan Clark, who puts the seatbelt on. on. There you go. You put, yeah. Okay, Matt. Okay, yeah. He definitely think, put the seatbelt on. I, the, I like the katana. Oh, on the defense, number 55. Down. So, offsides on the Wolves. I like the katana and the quiver better than uh, the seatbelt. That's just my A lot of guys probably doesn't even, don't even know what a katana is. They have to see that. <laughs> now, but you have to, you know. I'm down here Googling it myself. <laughs> You don't know what a katana is, Cade? It would be a really heavy seat belt, but I'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with seat belt from now on, guys. Okay, we have to get a guy and ask him and see it. And just, to, just, to, just to clarify for us. Well, hand it off up the middle to Ezekiel Mays, and Jeremy Smith makes the stop. You know what? We'll, we'll put Cade Perry on that. Hopefully going to the half. If it's a, if depending on the situation, grab of the game, Jet Lee. If it, he can, Jet Lee yeah. will tell you regardless of what the score is. He'll be happy to talk. Grab to Please game. come out with the word katana. How about like sword? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Because a Kate. katana is cooler than a sword. He said a katana, and I didn't know what it was until he actually explained it to me. <laughs> Matt, you watched too much anime growing no, up. No, I did not. Growing up, he probably still watches it now. <laughs> Very true. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Tight left, they'll fake it to Watkins. Looking is Ramirez, looking, looking, rolling to his left. It's a pick, Jordan Clark picked it, and he's gonna run it out about seven yards deep. And Clark's gonna put his head down and get across the 10 to the 12. Jordan Clark with an interception in the back of the end zone. Ramirez with a mistake, first and 10, West Georgia. That is a great job by the West Georgia defense, but Jordan Clark had two big plays on his drive, the interception and the game, and, and that saving touchdown, that deflection he got. So great job by Jordan Clark. Here's the UWG Productions instant replay. What a way to end the first quarter. West Georgia leads 14-0 and a Jordan Clark interception. We'll be back right after this on UWG Productions.
Oh, look at that little golden right there. And some alumni here tonight supporting the Wolves. I got the golden doodle myself. You do? I love golden doodles. We'll hand it to Rajay's Mosley up the middle. 20, 25. Rajay's 30, 35. They can't tackle him. Took two or three guys to do so. They'll put it at the 36, first and 10, West Georgia. Man, what a way to start the second quarter, picking up where we left off. Yes, he's showing why he's leading the conference in rushing um, in yards per carry right now, Matt. He, he's run so hard. We'll send two receivers out to the right. Look at the blocking, all blocking right. Very nicely done. Finally, uh, Ryan Cheetah brought him down. Two receivers right, one to the left. Trey Williams in motion. We'll hand it to Rajay's right side again. Mosley stiff arms and falls forward across the 40 to the 41 yard line, or they're going to put it at the 40, gain of three. Let's look at the first quarter stats, Ben. There's two big ones that really will th look out to you. We were three of three on third down conversions. They were 0 for two. And one of uh, the, the most important, they've got two turnovers. We've got the zero. Yes, and that, that's a big part right there, yeah. the turnovers. Us not having a oh, West Georgia not having a turnover right now is two really extra big. possessions for yes. the Wolves, and they they lead the time of possession. Fake it to Mosley, throw it across the middle. We missed T Cole on the slant. Good looking, uh, a great play right there on the RPO. Good pull by Cam, just couldn't make the throw to T Cole. It'd be third down and uh, long six still. We got Marquise Bridges coming in the ball game for the first time tonight. Tubbs, who called a ridiculous touchdown in the first quarter. And Steven Peterson and T. Cole out to the right. Rajay is still in the ball game behind Cam Brown. And a pistol formation. Now they'll bring him beside him. Brown fakes it, looking and almost intercepted. And the linebacker, big linebacker, number seven, DeLavon Donald. One of the top linebackers in the conference. And there you see Coach David Dean. And that's really the first negative drive we have. But Coach Dean entering tonight has been just incredible. I mean, absolutely incredible for our program. And it's great to have him coach and lead our team. And we'll get to Coach Farrington here from North Greenville in just a moment. 13.41 to go, second quarter. And Riley Mason will have to punt it away for the first time. Good snap. And Riley got destroyed. They're going to be roughing the punter. And they're going to call for a fair catch. And he called for a fair catch, but then he started running. So uh, Brady Batson called for fair catch. And it's going to be first and 10 West Georgia. There was no need for Riley to act on that foul. He definitely got ran into oh, my goodness. On the defense, number 29. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And that's not technically a turnover, but you basically count it as a turnover because we get the ball right yes. back after a huge play. So Wolves will have the ball here across midfield and go to the 45-yard line, 13-32 to go. Trips to the left. Tight right with Zach Obi, Rajay's Mosley in a running back still. That's a big blow. The Crusaders finally got a stop they deserved and needed. But West Georgia looking to take advantage of it right here with 13.32 to go. Hand to Rajay's Mosley, 40, 35, 30. Rajay's across the 25 down to the 24-yard line. First down, West Georgia. Man. Great job by the West Georgia offensive line. Talk just about it, baby. Yeah, just open up that hole for Rajay's Mosley. He didn't have to make any cuts. He just ran a straight line to get the first down. Marvin James uh, on that right side, who's obviously playing out of position, has not played a lot of tackle in his career. Him and Zach Obey on that last play did a great job. Yes, and Kay, that is a true big <laughs> offensive lineman. <laughs> Handed it to Rajay's Mosley up the middle. The other number one, Curtis Ryans, makes the stop along with a couple other uh, big defensive linemen for the Crusaders. Gain of five, second and five. The actual definition of big. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Yeah, Marvin James, uh, we've got him listed at uh, 6'3", 320. And he is nowhere. I honestly think Marvin James is 6'5". Just by <laughs> looking at him, he is humongous. Two receivers left. Tight right, Zach Obey and Keontae Skinner in at wide receiver here down on the bottom of your screen. Cam Brown going to run quarterback draw, makes a man miss, and cuts up field across the 15 
and that's where they'll put it. A couple of Crusaders make the stop. Fred Billy makes the stop. What a name. Yeah. Name of the game. Fred Billy. I love it. I remember calling his name out last year. Actually, my dad broadcasted both the North Greenville games with me last year. That was an awesome time, a time I'll never forget. Me, him, and uh, Brian Gray. How was that being able to do that oh, with your dad? Something man. I'll never forget. He did pretty good. Well, handed to Rajay's Mosley up the middle. How did he get through that small little crease across the 10 to the 8-yard line? First and goal, West Georgia. I thought he was swallowed up in the backfield. Next thing I know, he swims out there. <laughs> and Rajay's will come out. Half his shoulder pads are off. He looks tired. Oh, oh Get my that man goodness. some oxygen. Get him some water, please. We'll go with Ashad Robinson in the ball game now. Wonder if Wesley Cole's okay or uh, Wesley Kennedy's okay. We will hand it to Ashad up the middle. He's fighting for yards up to the six-yard line. First down and go, or second and goal from the six. 11 minutes to go. West Georgia leading 14 to nothing. West Florida just scored on a 10 play, 65 yard drive. They are leading at Delta 24 to 21. 11 20 to go in that game. That's been a pretty close game. Yes, man. it That's has. That's the entire time, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Robertson behind Cam Brown now. We'll hand it to him left side. Robertson makes a nasty cut. Oh, my goodness. And will waltz into the end zone for a West Georgia touchdown. What a move by Robertson. My word. Great. DeAndre Moss got mossed at the three. Just completely broke down, and Robertson walks it in for the West Georgia touchdown. Like you see on the replay, that was just a great, just whoop, a great cut. Whoop. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Great job, Ashad Robinson. We are so deep at a lot of positions, yeah. Matt. West Georgia's deep at linebacker, running back. It's, you just can't ask for much better, especially at those positions. Hogan will hold it. Reagan snapped it. Great hold, great snap. Kick is up by Davalos. It looks good because it is good. We're having fun on UWG Productions. Wolves lead 21-0 over North Greenville. Back after this. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me Appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Productions. Look at the hill, Ben. Looks great up there. They're having a lot of fun up there. And we'll go down to the third member of our crew, Kate Perry. 
I like this offensive explosion. Yeah. We finally found them. I don't know where they were. They were under the rock. They were under the trash can. I don't know where it was, but they finally found it. Yeah, okay, they finally found it. But it, it wasn't in Carrollton, Georgia, I can tell you that. So they, they definitely found it now. End over end kick will send them back inside the five yard line and a huge tackle. J or is that Carson Yancey? Yeah, it is. Car Carson Yancey and J.R. Dorman scared me up here. He about broke the glass. If you didn't know, he's our special teams coordinator and linebackers coach, and that'll make him happy. <laughs> that scared you. Uh, yeah, because I've never I seen saw, Coach Dorman get that jump. excited before. Ever. I wish we had the booth cam turned on and saw you jump. Guys, we're not supposed to jump. <laughs> Man, if you see, you never see, Coach Dorman's a pretty level guy. So seeing him get excited like that means he really has been on Carson Yancey about showing up, and he definitely just showed up that, on that play. Oh, no, that was Javen West. 21 to nothing. Wolves over the Crusaders. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Ramirez takes the snap. We'll hand to a running back, and he'll go nowhere thanks to Deontay Overstreet. The senior from Tiff County made the stop. It'll be second down and 11. And that was the first carry of the game from Yavin Smith. Excuse me. Yavin is what the pronunciation chart says. So that's what we're going to call it. They fake it to Smith. Ramirez looking to throw. And he'll have to throw it up for grabs. And it's lucky it didn't get interception. Keandre Williams with another hurry. And it'll be third down and 11. And dangerous, dangerous, dangerous third down coming up for North Greenville. The Wolves are building a lot of momentum right now, man, and it's looking pretty good for them. How about we get home with a sack right here? I hear everything's better and better this time of year. How about Keandre Williams step up one time? You call it now. Let's see yeah. it. Two receivers to each side. Snap, Ramirez looking to throw and nowhere close to intended receiver. Good work. Malcolm Mercer says not a chance. Big Demetrius Lofton got back there as well. Great pass rush. Malcolm gives a wave goodbye to the offensive line and it's going to be fourth down and time to punt it away. As a former offensive lineman, Malcolm is one of those guys you just – you just don't you just don't want him to get get excited because he's going to talk to you the entire game. Well, nothing's more than depressing than going three and out of yes. an offense, right? Nothing. I mean, that's the depressing. worst. That's the worst. Or a turnover on first down. That's pretty bad. Too. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty bad too. Low snap, handled, end over end punt back to Zay Britt at the 39 yard line. Britt will get tackled immediately. The big long snapper, big 94. Justin Corbett makes the stop. Yeah, Anytime you see a long snapper make a play, got to give him some. Got to give him some love. Got to give him some love. And just because we're talking about long snappers, shout out to our long snapper, and also shout out to our former long snapper, Joe Skinner. Yeah. All right. 9:32 to go here in the second quarter. We're keeping it here for the Wolves' second drive of the second quarter. Been pretty successful so far. We'd love to keep it going. As our Coach Dean would usually say, let's keep this train rolling. So that's what <laughs> I know that's what he definitely told the guys in the huddle just then, keep that train rolling. Trips to the right, one to the left. Brown looking the whole way to T.J. Lockley. He makes the grab. And then a couple of Crusaders come and make the stop. Well, really just one, number 44. Uh, Jalen Davis made the stop for the uh, made the stop for the Crusaders, gain a four. Cam Brown with Rajay's Mosley back in. Yeah, something's got to be up with Wesley Kennedy. I'm looking for him down there on the sideline, and I just don't I don't see him. So hope he didn't re-injure that quad. But we're we're I'm not wishing anything. I'm just we're in good hands with Rajay's Mosley. This guy running the football is pretty good too. Cam Brown down the sideline, 40, 35, man to man miss. Oh, they said he stepped out of bounds at the 30. Seven yard line. And you see Jalen Moore point <laughs> saying he didn't step out. He didn't step out. Well, Cade, you were there. Did he step out? I can neither yeah. confirm nor deny, but it did not look like he stepped out. But Bryce Carlson doesn't agree. <laughs> Ball at the 38 yard line. First and 10. 
to be honest, I don't know how we tightrope the sideline without stepping out of bounds. All his momentum was going that way. I don't think he stepped yeah. out of bounds. Oh, it's wow. called being athletic, Matt. <laughs> Something I would know nothing about. One receiver to each side will fake it. Cam going to have the hot hand and keep it. Weren't able to get much of a block there, but, uh, man, Trey Williams was blocking his guy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Trey Williams took his guy for a ride. Yeah, he did. Uh, big Rodney Evans, I'd love to see his size. He's listed as 5'10", about 3 hundo. That's a big guy, but That's Trey Williams is, how tall is, Trey Williams is like 6'3", 250, so yeah. he's a pretty big yeah. guy too. Well, trips to the right, one to the left. Nice play there by Rodney Evans. Second and nine, Rajay is Mosley beside Cam Brown. He'll get it here on second and long. He'll cut back to the left. Backside is there. He spins and fights and jukes and jives and dives to the 29-yard line. What a run by Rajay. All the above. <laughs> All the above. He did he everything. He used every <laughs> inch of his five-foot-seven body to get those eight Young yards. Three. Or how he said last week, five, six and a half. Five, six and a half. You know what feels different this week? The running game. Yeah. The running yes. game. I mean, North South the whole time. There's no side to side. They're getting it done. Rajay's Mosley, he had his Wheaties. <laughs> Third and one. Brown takes the snap. Gonna follow it up down and put his shoulder down and get the first down as Amari Coates, or excuse me, DeAndre Moss makes the stop. And we got a big down, we got a big guy down. Uh I don't this Brevin Jones. That's big no, that's James. Big Marvin. Oh, Ooh. We are already, we've got some depth on the offensive line, but we are already slim pickings with what Bryson Jones out for possibly the season. Now Big Marv, our most experienced offensive line, that's a big dude trying to help get up. But seeing him get up is really good, oh, though, yeah. so that's he's a good. great job. Oh. Yeah, he's good. He's good. I saw David Biden immediately. Anytime somebody immediately yes, signals somebody worried. on the field, you get worried. But big, big Marv's okay. He's going to have to sit Marv out for a play. Either. We'll have uh, Brandon Pippen. There's old Wolfie, the one, the only Wolfie. The one and only Wolfie, Matt, the one and only. Wolfie taking, Wolfie taking photos with all the fans. And hey, scan that QR code right now. Put your phone up to your screen at home and get that QR code. You got a chance to win some money. You win some money and you should always want to win money, Matt, yeah, right? Who, who wouldn't? And it goes to a great cause. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Rajay Mosley hurdles a couple of guys. Looks like he got his face mask ripped across to the 21-yard line. Gain of four, second and six, 642 and counting on a second quarter clock. There's Big Marv coming back in. Ooh, that is a humongous human being. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Big Marv. He runs with his chest up, too. Yes, he runs, <laughs> he runs with all the pride he has coming out, all of it. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. T.J. Lockley will go Zach Obi tight left. Rajay's Mosley situated beside Cameron Brown. Takes the snap. We'll hand to Rajay's right side. 15, 10, 5. Rajay's, did he get in? No, down inside the one. What a run by Rajay's Mosley. 20 yards, almost a cloud of dust, but one yard short. First and goal, West Georgia. Austin Donaldson, David Bodden, Sam Regina. Right, Brevin Jones and big Marvin James just opening up holes right now. You just if you see that replay just then Marvin just sealed the entire right side. Him and him and Austin Donald well, is yeah, Austin Donaldson. That was a great job by them just open the hole up for, for we Rajay's go, Mosley. We go Wildcat, Rajay's Mosley will take the snap and walk it in. Touchdown, he muscled his way in. He got hit right at the goal line by Zach Jordan. Didn't matter, you're not stopping that bowling ball. Touchdown, West Georgia. It's 27 to nothing. And I think this is the West Georgia offense we've been looking to find for the last couple of weeks. And man, I can't wait to talk to Coach David Dean. I know we got a lot of football left to be played, but man, it's been fun. I know this is gonna be an easy first half for Cade, isn't that right, Cade? <laughs> this is gonna be a great <laughs> halftime interview for Cade. He'll get three questions. Three in. questions. You have all of them in your mind right now? I'm still out of breath from jumping. <laughs> <laughs> Davalos, Cade some oxygen. Davalos will put it up and in good. 28 to nothing, timeout on the field. Timeout on the field, and we'll be back for more right after this on UWG Productions.
whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Beautiful drone view of University Stadium and Raylin Field. And it's courtesy of the UWG Department of Digital Experiences. And led by Corey Spates and production engineer Matt Cash, they can literally do anything they want to from where they're situated tonight at the UWG Coliseum. And if you want to, if you're a college student or getting ready to go into college and want to have fun and broadcasting, you need to come here in, in, in the video production space, audio, visual, doesn't matter. And a huge hit by Kel Bright after a nice return by Jarek Foster. UWG is the place to be. I mean, how many people get to fly a drone in the air at a football game? I Not mean, too many people, man. <laughs> Not too many. And, and, and get a great view like this. Oh, my goodness. I mean, we do all kinds of high-level broadcasts. I mean, they do events all over campus. Uh, I mean, just incredible. It connects the universities. It connects all over the university. I yes, mean, just man. absolutely incredible. And, and Corey and Matt Cash, they lead it up, but folks like Shemaya and, and, and the student workers are the guys that are the backbone of, and this is all student-led, student-ran. And, and they put their all into this. Yeah. You can tell just by the production Woo. itself. Speaking of playing his all, Mason Huntley has continued to play well over the last couple of weeks, and he makes the stop from the backside. They give it to Corey Watkins, his first carry in a minute. I'm going to stand back up, man. We've been doing so well. Yeah, let's keep it rolling. Yeah, keep it rolling. 28 to nothing, Wolves lead after a two-yard loss. Ball at the 24-yard line. Here you see Mason Huntley, the junior from, or the sophomore from Parkview High School, Lilburn, Georgia. Snap, throw it out to Ramirez, and Kamai and Fagans had a great read on it, but a nice catch by number nine, Cameron Walker, up to the 30-yard line. And it'll be third down and six to go. Third and long. Third and long. Third and long. Kamai and Fagans made the stop. And third down and got to get six yards. Got to get up to the 36-yard line with 418 Wolves. Do get the ball to start the second half, and then they might get another shot to score before the half. That's something for the Wolves you definitely want. Ah, but, uh, we flag. jump. Going to be a free play. They'll throw it up, and ah, it's even worse. They caught it across midfield to the 49-yard line, and Michael Merriweather in coverage to the 49. First down. Offside, Outside. defense, defense number 25. 25. That penalty, that penalty is declined. Is Result of the play is a first down. So Brian Rice jumps offside. <clears throat> but doesn't matter after a nice pitch and catch there. For a first down. North Greenville cross midfield, I think for the second time tonight. Well, technically third, they fumbled on that first drive, threw the interception on the third drive, and now here they are again across midfield. Ramirez will keep it. Malcolm couldn't grab him, and then uh, Deontay Overstreet trips him up on his fingertips across the 45 to the 44-yard line, 338 and counting here in the second quarter. North Greenville taking their time. Watkins coming off. They'll send three receivers out to the left. 
They have a tight left too, so very strong formation to the left side. Uh, running back is Mays. Bringing a man in motion now across the formation. That is Dre Williams. They'll fake it. They'll dump it out here to the tight end. He was wide open, and he couldn't get onto it. Get a hand. Well, he got a hand on it, but not the best of throws by Ramirez. Micah Thurman was a little behind there, and they we called a break because it looked like A.J. Tolbert had a nice seam to run a little bit. Yeah, that would have been an automatic first down if he would have caught that yeah. ball right there. He at least, like you said, would have had the first down and probably five or six more yards after that. And it's third down and five to go. Ball on the 44-yard line. Trips out to the right, one to the left. Snap to the right of Ramirez. He handles it okay, and he had a man open. Foster was, uh, or that was Watkins. No, it was uh, Williams, Dre Williams, I'm sorry. That was open, but he just threw a Sunday hop to him, and they'll have to punt it away. Yeah, Dylan Ramirez hasn't been looking too too good since that first drive. Honestly, he hasn't been comfortable. I think he's been a little rattled by yeah. our D-line, getting some good pressure tonight. But he had all the time in the world right there and just delivered a Sunday hop to him. He probably was just so shocked he was he had so much time as well because the Wolves have, like you said, been back there a lot this, uh, this first half. I guess that answers my question about Wesley Kennedy. He's good to go. He's back deep to receive at the 10. This is Calcutt to punt it away. Good snap. Oh, and Javen West about got a hand on that end over end kick. And man, one of their players went airborne over the Trent Realty side on the, on the right yeah, side. It. Oh my goodness. I guess he got pushed and then he ran over the 20 and ran into the Trent Realty side down there. Hope he's okay. Yeah, he, he's, he's running it off, but he, it looks like he's in a little pain right Kennedy now. Kennedy called for the fair catch, but I was just so uh, taken aback by the guy going flying into our sponsorship. Uh, the three the of us <laughs> had, have never had that problem. We've <laughs> never had to stop from that speed, yeah. so we have no idea how. <laughs> oh, man. Trips to the right. Wesley Kennedy back in there. Tight, uh, tight end left is Zach Obi. We'll hand it to Kennedy. He'll squeeze through a hole. I, I just don't know how these running backs get through those small of holes, man. They they just have good vision. They're able to just squeeze their way and get. They're fighting for every inch right now. It's like they're almost fighting for their lives, Matt. We got across the 15 to the 17 yard line. Gain of about four. It's second and six. Trips to the right, one receiver to the left. We'll throw it out here to LaPerion Perry, LP, trying to make some guys miss, run back across the 20 to the 21 yard line. And it will be third down and two. Did LP just get a thousand receiving yards for that catch in, in the catch and run right there, Matt? Uh, He needed two I, yards. He needed two yards, I believe. That's all he needed. Yep, congratulations yep. to LaPerion Perry. Just went over the 1,000-yard receiving mark in his career. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a big accomplishment, man. Great job to LaPerion Perry. We are all in tight. Everybody in seven yards on the ball. Bring an LP in motion. We'll hand it to Wesley Kennedy right side. Gets the first down up to the 26-yard line. Patient running by Wesley Kennedy. Now we'll probably see us go a little bit quicker. We've got three timeouts to work with, 129 on a second quarter clock. There's LaPerion Perry, congratulations to him. Just went over 1,000 yards receiving and he has just been incredible. He throw it and oh, in and out of the hands. No, they're gonna say T. Cole called it. I don't think he caught that ball, Ben. But it was almost say, intercepted. And that's what David Dean saying, go, go, go. They said he did catch it up to the 34 yard line. We're going quick. A minute and two seconds and counting. Two receivers each side. Brown looking and ah, throws a Sunday hop. We're going to have a holding, looks like. And it will be third down, but will they take the holding penalty? Let's see what the referee. 
the offense, number 77. Ten yard penalty for the previous spot, replay second down. So a 10 yard penalty for the Wolves on Brevin, Jon uh, Brevin Jones. So they're running some guys off the field. It'll be second down and 13 ball on the own 23 yard line for West Georgia. 57 seconds. Snap to Brown, three man rush, Brown. Makes a man miss. Brown throwing on the run in and out of the hands and good defense. Uh, had a chance to get it to Zay Britt. Also had LP open, but couldn't get it to him. And I wanted to see who that was. That number five? I think it was number five for them that knocked it away. DeAndre Moss, good coverage. He will find out on the UWG Productions instant replay. That's the best Cam's looked in the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, too, in my opinion. Yes, I think, because usually two weeks ago, Cam would have took off and ran. So yeah. that's a great job just by keeping his eyes down the field, knowing the situation. Third and 13, 51 seconds to go. Snap by Cam to Cam Brown, looking. Almost takes a hit. Now he's going to run, and he'll run out of pounds, stay in bounds, Cam. We Brown, want that clock to run, but it doesn't matter. There's going to be a, a holding penalty or a, a flag in the vicinity of holding. And here we bragged on the offensive line on the whole first half. And right here before the half, we're going to get some holding calls. But they'll, de they'll, <laughs> they'll decline these uh, penalties. Holding on the offense, number 78. That foul is declined. Fourth down. They'll be fourth down. So fourth down. We'll have to punt it away. Their return man, that is not Fred Billy as it is listed. Looks like number 32. Brady Batson. We'll need Riley Mason to boom one to Rootville right here. 28 to nothing, 43 seconds. Mason, not the prettiest looking kicks, but a fair catch is called for at the 38-yard line. I'll actually say the 37-yard line, and that's where North Greenville will set up shop. And to my, to what I see, I believe they have all, all three timeouts. They got to do something here. Yeah, they have to do something because West Georgia gets the ball back at half, and the way they've been playing, besides yeah. the two drives they had that ended negatively, they've been playing really good this, this first half, Matt. So North Greenville will come out. Corey Watkins and Dylan Ramirez. Two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left. Ramirez with Watkins beside him. Now he sends them out of the backfield. Ramirez looking to throw. He'll hit a man in the slot at the 40, at the 45 yard line. And a pickup of eight yards and a timeout immediately called by North Greenville. That was Cameron Walker, the wide receiver, making the grab. A couple of Wolves bring him down. Look like Xavier Robinson, and it will be second down and two. North Greenville, their first charge timeout of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. And yeah, your key as a West Georgia defender right here is to keep these guys uh, in bounds right here. Yes. Keep them in bounds, and I want you to hit on that point. But as we talk about series history and see these great kids dancing, we played these guys twice last year. Last meeting was on November the 12th. Got the win, 43-36. Broke a couple of school records in that game for offense. And we are 5-0 all time against the Crusaders. And uh, this will be the last time that we probably play North Greenville for the foreseeable future. Obviously, North Greenville will be exiting the conference and going to the Conference of the Carolinas with Shorter, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And then... Uh, the Wolves obviously are going out to the United Athletic Conference for football or the Ace Sun for the rest of the schools. So, can you do the Cupid Shuffle now? This is my style of dancing. Okay. I can do the Cupid it's Shuffle. It's simple. It's simple. Yeah. You asked me to start doing anything else than kicking my feet and Please don't twisting let them get my it hips. On I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Keep it on the cheerleaders. <laughs> Second and two, Ramirez looking to throw. Now he'll step up and be brought down from behind Big Eric Williams and with the sack. Big Eric Williams with the huge sack. Great job by Eric Williams. And you don't usually see that from the nose tackle position as well. They used to take on a lot of blocks. 
more importantly, we only got pressure with four. That's what's so key in these two-minute situations. Eric Williams, the big defensive lineman, brings them down from behind, and it will be third down and four. Another timeout called by the Crusaders. Cade, Eric Williams is another humongous guy as well. He's, he's, he's big. We have a lot of big guys down here <laughs> on the sidelines. That's what you can't see if you're not here. These guys are huge. They, they can play anywhere on Saturday, I promise. How's that North Greenville offensive line looking? Looking better than last week? It's going to be hard to outdo last week's <laughs> offensive line for the uh, – the largest offensive line I've ever seen. <laughs> Bigger than Limestone? Because Limestone offensive line oh, was huge, yeah. too. They were big. It's a and different kind of big. <laughs> <laughs> there you see Coach Jeff Farrington. Coach Farrington at North Greenville. and Big fan of Coach. Great guy. What uh, Was here in the 90s. Uh, my dad worked with him when he was the SID here. Always talked about how great of a guy he was, a great coach. And uh, just... He's done a great job at North Greenville getting that program back to, and they'll do great things in the Conference of the Carolinas. Screen game thrown out here across the 50. He dropped the ball and will pick it back up. What are the odds of that lucky bounce? I mean, that ball dropped straight down and popped right back up into his hands. And luckily for West Georgia, he stayed in bounds. So with 10 seconds, they have to burn their last time out here. Yes, usually. But look at this play. Look at this play, Ben. I'm pretty sure he dropped the ball. He, he got American yeah. football confused with rugby. <laughs> he dropped the ball. His own player chicken winged him, we call it. That's yes. what we call a chicken wing. And usually nine times out of ten, that ball goes to the other team. Yeah. So that was a that was a big play for them because a huge, huge break. Well, how many times do you see a ball when you drop a football, it's not gonna pop yeah. right back up? I mean, Unless you're a punter and you do that drill where you literally cradle it and drop it like perfectly. So 10 seconds left. Whatever North Greenville does right here, it has to go past the first down marker or it has to go out of bounds. There is no in between. Or we will be getting a three-question interview with Kate Perry and Coach Dean in just a moment. And see if Kate can get a question <laughs> from Jet Lee. <Lee>. Yeah. <laughs> I did ask Coach Dean about his coaching history with Coach Farrington. Coach Dean said that they both arrived. Ron, Coach Ron Journey's final year uh, coaching the West Georgia Braves back then, and then they were together three years with uh, head coach Charlie Fisher before Coach Farrington left West Georgia and went up to East Tennessee State. So four years total they were on the same staff, good friends obviously. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Ramirez looking to throw, and he's going to be turned in a circle, and this might be the last play of the half. Ramirez looking two seconds, one second, runs out of bounds, and that'll be the last play of the half. Possibly. That's the end of the half. Oh, they're going to say it is the last play of the half. Zero seconds on the clock. All right, we'll take that. I thought he ran out yeah. with possibly one second left. He was looking at the scoreboard. We'll take halftime, and we will look, make sure we get all of our guys back into the locker room. No need to be talking anything to them. Coach Dean's walking here on the near side. He's to the numbers at the 20, and he's running right towards our great Cade Period. Here at a 28 nothing lead at the half. Let's send it down to Cade Perry with Coach Dean. Well, Coach, you looked and you looked and you looked and you found the offense. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're playing pretty good. We're running the ball really, really well. Our offensive line is doing a great job up front. We got to connect on some passes. We're, I know everybody's going, why in the heck are y'all throwing it so much? But it's RPO stuff, and they're giving it to us. We're just not connected. But uh, uh, we're, we're doing a good job offensively. Defensively, got to tackle a little bit better. We're, you know, we're making some good hits, and then they're getting a yard or two after that. We got to stop those. All right, Coach, looking forward to the second half. Go Wolves. Thank you. I love it, Cade. We'll take it. 
with Coach Dean, a very happy Coach Dean. We love a happy Coach Dean, especially up here in the booth. It makes us feel good. Yes, you got to love a happy <laughs> Coach Dean because, you know, going into halftime, everything's going to be more mellow. And it's going to make sure, you know, make sure the guys get ready for the second half. Well, our UWG production crew is on top of it. They've been fantastic. And guess what? We have one more half of football coming back in about 15 minutes right after this. Hello, I'm Destiny Austin, and thank you for watching WTV News Brief. Homecoming is officially here, and there's an organization that focuses on service. The annual Homecoming Day of Service is a day when Volunteer Ambassadors provides a helping hand to those in need, such as nonprofit organizations during Homecoming. Assistant Director of Student Life, Khalees Thomas, says the purpose of the event is to clean areas on campus and the community. This year, the Ambassadors decided to focus on the Community Garden, the Carroll County Soup Kitchen, and Safe Haven Cedar Town. The volunteers visited these areas to clean, collect trash, and other debris. Due to inclement weather, the organization was unable to clean the community garden, so they decided to help decorate the campus center windows instead. This is the second year for the event, and students say the annual homecoming day of service combines fun and aid. The local soda shop Sips is now under new management after only a year of being open. The new management will bring changes to the shop, including longer operating hours and additional food items on the menu. The shop will now open at 6 a.m. with food items described as sweet treats. Owner Christy Clausen Kimball and Gina Whitfield are hoping to expand the shop alongside the growing Carrollton community. Downtown Carrollton presented its third annual Great Pumpkin Decorating event at the Addison Square Amphitheater. Walmart, Butter Duttered, and the Carrollton Police Department worked together for this collaborative event. Walmart supplied the pumpkins and CPD distributed the art supplies and police badge stickers. Families brought their kids to the freestyle on the miniature pumpkins with various pink colors, stickers, and gems. Butter Dutter supplied premium ice cream while everyone watched It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Thank you for watching WTV News Brief. Enjoy the game and remember, go West, go Wolves. Georgia's number one stop for everything Polaris and more.
Adrenaline Power Sports is your locally owned power sports dealer, providing everything for work and play, from Polaris ATVs to side-by-sides. And from GEM electric low-speed vehicles to trailers. We've got you covered. Come visit our dependable service and parts departments or stop and check out our wide selection of new and used inventory. Here at Adrenaline Power Sports, we strive to support our local community and provide excellent customer service to all. Come see us in Griffin or visit us online at AdrenalinePWR.com. We're proud sponsors of the University of West Georgia Athletics Department. Go Wolves! Tell Logan to come in in 10, 9, 8, eight 7, seven six, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Go, Logan. And we're back. UWG Productions is a student-led organization where the students are playing a big part in broadcasts of sports and other student events, but it's mostly the sports like volleyball and football and soccer. But the students are entirely like leading the production and the project. Um, and it, it allows us to get like really good hands-on experience and, and it's really fun. We just kind of have fun with it. My favorite part about UWG Productions is how hands-on we can be right when we start. My favorite part is how it was instantly hands-on from day one. I can say that having the hands-on experience that I did through this organization absolutely padded my resume absolutely made me a more communicative leader, made me a better team member, and made me a better filmmaker as a whole. It's not like we have to, you know, sit back and shadow somebody for a long time. We get to jump right in because it is a student-led uh, production team. So I think that's my favorite part about it, how we get to be so hands-on with, with all the equipment. I think it's the greatest learning atmosphere on campus where you, don't, you can have no skills, and you can come on, try it, you can keep learning. There'll be somebody on your shoulder, you got somebody in your headset telling you like, hey, frame it this way, and you start learning. And I just thought that was the greatest experience, just kind of getting thrown in the fire, see what you got, and then we'll learn based on that. It was a, hey, here's the camera, we're gonna go to a practice, and if you mess up, you mess up, and that's okay, now you know. And so that's something that I really liked about incorporating new students into the, the family. <laughs> well, I mean, I love the school as itself, but it was just really cool to be able to find like my niche. Like they had exactly what I wanted. So if you're really into live production, like sports and especially like camera stuff, I definitely say come in and get your hands on that because it's a really good opportunity. And I don't think a lot of other places offer that, but it's really special that UWG does. We need to get that on camera. <laughs> So y'all did say this West Georgia, right? This y'all homecoming, right? Welcome to the pack. 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 Welcome to the pack.
we're here at Battle of the Halls. Who are we here with? Nicole. Hi, Nicole. And what year are you and what house or hall are you with? I'm a freshman and I'm with University Suites. We're at AB School <laughs> I'm here with the Villages, the Kappa Alpha Order. The one and only all review. How has your experience been at uh, Battle of the Hall so far? It's been good, very loud, love the spirit. Listen, the energy is high and it is crazy out here. So if you haven't been, you got to make sure you come. It's been good. We just won that last game. Oh my gosh, it was so crazy. All right, and what event were you guys just doing just now? So we just did a tug of war. Yeah. Yeah, it got a little heated and they were pulling and then the rope just snapped. It was it was crazy. Can you show us the evidence right there? Yeah, so. <laughs> <clears throat> um, this is half of the rope. You know, it was a lot of alpha male energy over there. Um, we didn't expect that. We were just running it back, but you know, we just too strong. We live. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Hello, my name is Kai Morgan. I'm here with UWG Productions, and we're going to show you our production setup for football because we have a broadcast in a couple of hours. Here we have our Sony 4K camera on the roof. This is one of our camera setups, and over here is our PTZ cam brought into the control room over the University Enterprise Network to give us NDI video. And now I'm going to send it to Shamaya in the operation room. Hey y'all, my name is Shamaya. I'm here in the operations room. Here we have a in-house audio where we pretty much control all of our music for the stream and in-house. We have our PA announcer here as well. We also house another camera in this area and we're also engineered to where we can talk back to the control room at any time. Now I'm gonna throw the Kai in our TV room. A big part of a broadcast is communication. Currently, I'm in our play-by-play -play booth where our play-by-play -play and color analysts can see the field beautifully from the 50-yard line. And we have these talkback boxes where they can talk back directly to the control room to keep that communication flowing. Additionally, we have our Ada cams and GVM light kits so we can have a personal view of the talent and to keep our image balanced. And now, I'm going to throw it to Shamaya on the AOB porch. Hey y'all, so now I'm at the Athletic Operations Building where we house our end zone camera angle. And what's cool about this camera angle is we also get a lot of our replay shots from this angle and we also have a great view of our home sideline. Now I'm gonna throw it back to Kai at our low end zone camera position. Hello everyone, here I am at our low angle camera position. Now this position is crucial because it shows whether someone scored or not at the goal line. And now I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya over on the opposite side of the field. Hey y'all, so now I'm down on the field with our wireless cam. We use Hollyland technology, our transmitter and receiver, to get pretty much anywhere on the field. We also have a boom mic attached to a pole for our net sound for our broadcast. Here we are in the control room where we have all of our camera's feeds coming in successfully. If you want to tune in to any of our broadcasts throughout the year, you can find us online at UWG Productions' YouTube page. Bye! <laughs> Ponytail on the top of the fountain, ponytail. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Are you taking pictures or video? That's video. Oh. <laughs> loading. <laughs> what kind of loading? 2022. Oh, yeah. Sell it. Sell it, Grace. 2022. We're so happy to be here. The Anagama kind of came from a lineage of uh, Japanese cave kilns, that's what anagama means is cave kiln. 
and that technology found its way through Korea to Japan, and then the Japanese perfected it to the kind of current state that it's in now. So yeah, that's it in general, wood fire. Wood's the fuel. Wood has been the fuel for firing ceramics for centuries. The wood ash in this case becomes the glaze that accumulates on the pieces. Nice surface on that. Yeah, I mean, that's all We were just talking about uh, glaze chemistry today in class and art in general, regardless of the uh, discipline, is undergirded with all kinds of science, physics, chemistry. Yeah, it's all, the, it's all of the above, really. I think art is one of the uh, disciplines, the pursuits, where it's all in there. We might not see it, but, and maybe we should more. All the students, we start at square one every semester. No wood, empty kiln, you know, typically the kiln's in some state of disrepair from the last firing. So we fix it, we clean it, we tend to everything, we arrange, we organize, we stage. We go through the whole process, there's shifts. Uh, everyone has a four hour shift, uh, two four hour shifts, excuse me, that they're responsible for. So it's, it's everything from kind of life skill managing, um, following through to uh, all the nitty gritty, but I think the real transformative thing is, is the, the people, the transformation that occurs with them. Um, I've had students that were, didn't want to do, didn't want to get near this thing. They were afraid of it. It's, you know, it's like you're right up against the sun and you have to wear protective gear and there's a, there's a fear factor. <laughs> Trademark, copyright. Um, so students, uh, you know, overcome a lot of things and they, they walk away with, like they did that, we did that. It was a big thing and we did that. So it lays the groundwork for a lot of other things to occur when they're not here, when they graduate, when they do the next thing they're gonna do. Back on UWG Productions and looking forward to a great second half and just named the homecoming queen and king and without question, the best half of football the Wolves have played all season long. No other way to say it. You can paint it any other way. We forced two turnovers on defense. We scored out on four out of the five drives offensive, or four out of the six drives offensively. It was a phenomenal first half. Offensive line did great things. I mean, just a lot of fun to watch, Ben. Yes, you can just see the Wolves are really starting to put things together. Like Coach Dean said, he's ready for the Wolves to play a, a, a complete game. And right now they play the complete first half. So let's see if they can keep doing that, man. And it's the running game. I yes. mean, 175 yards on the ground, 98 yards by Rajes Mosley, 46 yards by Cam Brown, 22 by Wesley Kennedy. Nice three-headed monster there. Yes, you can. Like, 
from seeing that from the first half, you can't ask for better for anything much better. Honestly, and that's a great job by them. And I know Coach Dean is really pleased with them and the offensive line coach, Coach Carlson. And on the defensive side, if I can get my live stats back, uh, well, whatever reason not working, but Dylan Ramirez, we talked about him. In that first half, he was 7 of 14, 50% uh, through an interception. And Corey Watkins, other than the long 24-yard run, has not been able to get much going on the ground. Yeah, and those two guys are their offense. So keeping them, keeping them uh, under under just what they what they usually can do is a plus for the Wolves, but let, we have to make sure that we keep doing what, they, what we're doing. Ain't nothing but a miss. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. It's okay. You have to I've heard the that song. lady singing on the mic down there all night long. I figured I'd join in. I sing. cannot yeah. hear her. Oh, well, you're lucky. Yeah, so that's why I was like, I'm, I'm asking you, like, how are you hearing this lady? I cannot hear her. Oh, man. Which I'm pretty, I'm glad I, I can't because I'll get aggravated. Well, we're I, as long as she keeps cheering for the Wolves, she's been fine. She yeah. really has been great tonight. I think she's just yeah. been yelling, let's go, Ben. <laughs> 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 oh, man. So Wolves look to continue. They get the ball to start. Get it to LP right here. Please. Come on. And nobody we already, has kicked it to him this We year. already saw LP get the over 1,000 yards receiving. They're not going to kick it to him. They'll kick it to Wesley Kennedy instead. He's pretty good at the kickoff return thing, too, to the two-yard line. Kennedy upfield across the 20, and down he'll go at the 23-yard line with 14.52 to go on a third-quarter clock. So West Georgia will start uh, set up shot first and 10 at the 23-yard line. Homecoming festivities coming to a close with the crowning of the king and queen. And there's big Demetrius Lofton just getting back off to the sideline. Usually when you see a guy running from the locker room right before the quarter is getting, getting started, he had to use the head to do number two. Yeah, he had to go to the bathroom. Pretty sure he had to use the bathroom. Yeah. Two receivers to the left, tight right, tight left. Wesley Kennedy will take the handoff from Cam Brown, and nice job by the Crusaders. They come out on fire. They get off the football. Number three led the charge, uh, Shane Monsanto. So second and 11. There you see Wesley Kennedy. Got the big red leggings. And the red sleeves. Two receivers to the left, tight left, all in tight. And then one receiver out wide is Terrell Cole. Cam Brown going to take off, going to run. He's at the 20, and he's uh, pushed out of bounds by 44, Jalen Davis. Punt alert they're calling for. We got to the 22-yard line, maybe the 23. And they're going to put it at the 23, so the original line of scrimmage. Good pursuit by North Greenville, not fooled on the play action there. Third down and 10. Two receivers to the right. We're empty. Three receivers to the left. Four down linemen. Well, no, three down linemen, and now they'll back off. Rushing three. Brown to throw, and in and out of the hands of Michael Tubbs. Cam stepped up, delivered a pass, but Michael couldn't make the grab. It was a little low, but had to fit it in between three defenders, and Tubbs couldn't make the grab, and it's fourth down. And this is a good shot right here. You'll put see. Some zip behind the ball. He too. did put some zip behind it. It was a little bit lower than I thought from that angle. The other angle, it looked like it could have been called. That was going to be a really, really tough catch. Spread punt. Riley Mason takes the snap from his left side. They don't rough him this time, and it is a bomb. He'll catch it on the 26-yard line. Fair catch caught for right there. What a punt by Riley Mason that will take us to our first media timeout of the half. We'll be back 28-0 right after this. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. 
I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me, appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Back at it, North Greenville will get their offense going here in the second half. Ball at the 26-yard line, first and 10. Trips out to the left, one receiver right. 13.29 to go on a third quarter clock. They'll hand it up the middle to Watkins, and he breaks the tackle. And up across the 40, they're still pushing the pile near the 44-yard line. Up across to the 45. What a run to start this drive, a 19-yard run, first and 10 Crusaders. Yeah, that was a good, really strong run by Corey Watkins right there. He's showing what he did on the first drive for, for the Crusaders of the game. Huge pack of wolves on the ground. There was about seven of them down. Let's see how many wolves it took. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six wolves in there to bring down Corey Watkins. They'll hand it to him again, and it took about six more, but they all swarmed to the ball right at the 45-yard line. There he is. Malcolm. Yes, yeah, the finger wave. <laughs> Let's hope to see that a lot this half. Let's see a lot of Malcolm waving his finger to, to the sideline, you know? You had all four defensive linemen and Xavier Robinson in there on the stop. It will be second down and 10. Man in motion towards the line of scrimmage is Robinson. Ramirez looking almost sacked by Huntley. He'll take off and run. Big hit by Jabron Claude near the first down marker, and he got the first down across midfield to the 45-yard line. First down, North Greenville. Ramirez making some play with his legs. Yeah, if I was if I were Ramirez, that's how he's going to build that rhythm. He's got to get get himself involved in the offense every way he can because right now he needs to get it going for the Crusaders. Two receivers left, one right, tight right. Running back is Mays, and they'll hand it off to him up the middle, and he goes untouched to the 35-30, and finally hit and tackled by Deontay Overstreet at the 28-yard line. First down, North Greenville. Big run of 17. Ezekiel Mays creased that one. Same formation. First down at the 28. They try to draw us off. We don't jump. I'd say that was the only negative in the first half. I think we had three offside penalties that they called us jumping on. Snap, hands it to Mays, left side, and Mason Huntley from the back side. I know it was six yards down the field, but if he doesn't make that stop, Mays is still running. Yes, and that's been his specialty all season, chasing plays down, just usually just really effort by Mason Huntley. That's the kind of player he is. He's all effort. Ball at the 23-yard line. Second down and five, 10.46 to go here in the third quarter. Trips out to the left. One receiver right, Corey Watkins in at running back with Dylan Ramirez, who's played a little bit better so far here in this third quarter using his legs. He'll keep it, 
Left side, nobody goes with him, and he'll take on the hit and get picked up and thrown to the ground by a couple of Wolves. Deontay Overstreet's helmet, no, that's Jabron Claude's helmet comes off. And Anthony Rochester will run in for the Wolves. Big run by Ramirez, gain of 11, first down again, Crusaders, and this is the best drive they've had in the ball game. Yes, Ramirez is showing how tough he truly is because a lot of quarterbacks would have slid right there. Yeah. So that's showing he's just he's not scared to put his nose in there. And then again, Jeff Farrington's probably like, uh, yeah, I want you to slide, Dylan. You know, just. <laughs> then again, probably not. Farrington, Coach Farrington's a pretty tough guy. Yeah. But still, any coach exactly. one of their quarterbacks, oh, yeah. you know, exactly. get your yards and slide. We're going to have a flag. They complete it down inside the five, down to the three. It's going to be another first down, but there is a flag on the play, and I believe it's going to be a formation penalty. A misalignment. There's a flag on the play. See, that or offsides on us. Offside. Yep. On the defense, number eight. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, first and goal. So first and goal for North Greenville, our fourth offside penalty of the night. Huntley, the guilty party there. First and goal from the three. I expect power read here between Watkins and Ramirez. Snap, hands off. Watkins up the middle. He'll spin into the end zone. Touchdown, North Greenville. How about a great answer by North Greenville? Yeah, that was a that, that's a huge possession for North Greenville. They needed that play, and this great job by them driving the field and getting a touchdown. A nine-play touchdown drive, twenty-eight to six, Crusaders add a touchdown. Corey Watkins, and I think they ran the ball every yeah. play. Seemed like a majority. That they did have the uh, the one pass to take yeah. it down to the three, but. They will attempt PAT. This is Colin Carew who will stick it up and in. And off the AOB, it is good. Here's the UWG Productions Instant Replay as Watkins spins into the end zone. 28 to 7, 9.42 to go, third quarter. West Georgia still leading. Back after this. your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. opportunity to win that Jeep. They're about to raffle it off here in the fourth quarter. All the proceeds go to UWG Athletics. They've been talking about it for a while. Somebody's going to walk out of here with a Scott Evans Dodge Jeep and Nissan Jeep. Well, drive it's beautiful. Out of here. Yeah, they'll drive out of here with it. 
They'll kick it off deep to Wesley Kennedy standing on the one. Kennedy 20, 25, 30. Kennedy cuts back across the game 40. Kennedy finally will go down at the 41 yard line. That's exactly what we needed. A big return. Give the offense a little bit of a shorter field to work with and a very nice return of 42 yards and a first down West Georgia. Yes, that's a, that's a spark that the West Georgia Wolves needed because they came out a little flat to begin the second half. And you know what Coach Dean said, he wants to play a complete game and that will definitely help them out right there. So Kennedy got his undershirt ripped. I swear, everybody gets their undershirt. What's the point of wearing an undershirt is just gonna get ripped? <laughs> the style. The style. The style. Gotta, have. Gotta have the style, man. Were you an undershirt guy? I was an undershirt guy, but Coach Dean had this huge rule about tucking shirts in, so I had to let go of the undershirt, but it seems like he <laughs> gave it back to him now. <laughs> Two receivers left, one to the right, and a delay a game? That was the quickest delay a game I've ever seen. On the offense, great. Five yard penalty, first down. I know I didn't talk for 25 seconds. There's no way you did. That was a quick 25 seconds. We're going to do like that lady says. We're going to get it back right here, hopefully. You are literally hearing everything she's saying. <laughs> and I can't hear a word. So now I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> First and 15. Three receivers left, one to the right. We'll hand it to Rajay's Mosley. How did he get out of there? 40, 45, Rajay's 50, 45, 40. Rajay's Mosley, if he doesn't trip up on his own feet around midfield, he might score, but then gets brought down by a Crusader at the 40 first down West Georgia. Oh my goodness. He, he right disappeared. Yes. He disappeared amongst the trees and then busted out of there and then was a touchdown saving tackle, in my opinion, by DeAndre Moss. Yes, like you said, if it went for the old turf monster, Rod Jace is running to about Austin. <laughs> Two receivers to the left, one to the right, tight right. Brown looking, got time to throw. Now he'll take off and run to the right. Cam will get as much as he can across the 40 to the 36-yard line, maybe the 37, depending on where this headlinesman puts it. Coach Farrington pleading his case, wanting a call. Trey Williams going to come in. So is LP. Two receivers to the left. One receiver to the right. Giving it off. Right, nope, faking it. And there's T. Cole on the catch at the 24. T. Cole to, to the 15, to the 10, and taken down from behind at the nine yard line. First down, West Georgia. How about the Wolves and Terrell Cole? There goes that RPO that yeah. Coach Dean was talking about, wanted to connect more, and he brought it out, and there it goes. T. Cole was wide open, and Cam Brown connected it with him. Beautiful read by Cam and a better throw. The corner went outside right there, and then he tried to punch it out. That was uh, Kendrick Clark made the touchdown saving tackle. Brown going to hand to Rajay's Mosley. Up the middle, runs through a man. Touchdown, Wolves. 7.48 to go here in the third quarter, and that's what a good offense does. They answer. It's 34-7. to Yes, and he's on the way to having a career day. Um, Rod Jace is looking really good right now. That offensive line is blocking for him, and that's a great job by the West Georgia Wolves to come out and score. Rod Jace Mosley. Huge drive. Look at that. And he wants to, oh, yeah. Lift him up, Zach Obi. David Bod, lift him up. Tyler Davalos will put on the PAT. Kick is up. It looks good because it is good. There's Rajay's Mosley talking to Dr. Poss. He's good to go. And there's Cam Brown handing it off to Rajay's. Unscathed. Four plays, 58 yards, and Rajay's Mosley having a great night. Absolute great night. That's his second rushing touchdown. He also has a receiving touchdown. And look at the kids. They're enjoying it, jumping up in the, the red bouncy chair. 
I love a watch a game from there. That seems very comfortable. That's the best Kane, view in the house. what are the odds you can do a break from up there in that red chair? <laughs> I'm more worried about getting into the red chair than I am getting out. So <laughs> the fact that you've already got me on camera jumping, I've already asked athletic director Jason Carmichael to look into the video of that, see if there's any way we can scrub it. <laughs> there's no scrubbing that, K. We've got to keep that for the, for the near future. We could keep the uh, – we could get the cheerleaders to lift you up there, Kate. You know, that's always a possibility, end over end kick. Zero chance. Down <laughs> to the five-yard line, and he'll run it out to – and Marcus Gary had a chance at him, can not grab him. And this man will kill Bright, makes the tackle. Marcus Gary was the first to touch him, then Kel Bright the next. And – Here's a shot coming up of our great dance team here on homecoming. They all have the long ponytails. Dances with attitudes. Dancers with attitude. <laughs> the dancers with attitude are dancing with attitude. Got to dance with attitude. I think I could pull that off. <laughs> dancing with attitude? Let's see it. The camera's on you right now. <laughs> Great job by our UWG Productions crew. They'll hand it off to Corey Watkins. And, man, he is a load to bring down. It takes three or four Wolves to finally do so at the 20-yard line. Like you said, he is a load. And the thing is, he's only 5'8", 178. So he, he runs a lot harder than what his size says. I remember from last year. It was a bowling yes. ball last year, man. Good, good back. Very good back. Two receivers to the right. Two to the left, second and eight. 7.05 to go here in the third quarter. West Georgia, a great job of answering on offense after the great drive by North Greenville. They'll fake it to Watkins, throw it across the middle, and nobody home. I don't know if that was just miscommunication or him trying to throw it away. But uh, Dre Williams was, I guess, the closest guy you could say is the intended receiver. And it's third down, as Patrick Edson says, next door to us. 6.54 to go. And let's see, You're bringing in and out a lot of guys. Three receivers to the right now, one single receiver to the left. And now they'll switch and flip-flop some receivers Almost a delay a game. Snap it with zeros on the clock and almost intercepted on a slant across the middle in coverage. Putting the seatbelt seat belt on. on. Putting the seatbelt on is Jordan Clark. You got to love that energy. He put that on. Yes, I love it. Great job by <laughs> oh, Jordan and Clark. He, he, was, he was keeping it tugged as he, as he ran. Oh, no, that's Jeremy Smith. I'm sorry, okay. guys. That's Jeremy Smith. He's showing them. He's showing them where it's still. The seatbelt is still on. <laughs> Kate, I think we got Matt on the side with the seatbelt, okay? It's finally well, I, happened. I got made fun of because I used a cool word like katana. I'm sorry, my English language is a little bit stronger. Oh, my goodness. We're not going to go there. Because <laughs> I know that's not true. <laughs> Punting it away as Calcutt. Steven Peterson almost blocked it. It will bounce at the 44 yard line, and Wesley Kennedy will let it roll. And that's where we will set up shop. First and 10 for West Georgia. At the 37 yard line, it will be first and 10 for the Wolves. 35 to seven, 639 to go. So 639 to go. Third quarter, Zach Obie at tight right. There's Kev. Kevin. <laughs> Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Takes the snap, fakes it to Wesley Kennedy. Got the sluggo move inside, but will throw it to Keontae Skinner. Couldn't make the grab. A little tough. They tried the old slant and go by uh, Marquise Bridges on the inside. I think that was the route they would want to go to there, but. That was well played by the Crusader defense because they, they saw that coming. But it would if he would, they would have bit, it would have been a wide open play. Go, 
Three receivers to the left. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. They'll hand it off to Wesley Kennedy up the middle to the 38-yard line, 35-7 to West Georgia leading, and you're about to see one of the best of the business. This is Sal. Sal is one of our content creators here at UWG Productions, guys. You think we're just audio and visual tech? No, we do it all. UWG Productions is literally everywhere. Great work by Sal, and you'll see the highlight films. You'll see the, the playbacks. They put it on their Instagram page every week. I love getting that notification on YouTube as well. Go and like and subscribe on their Instagram and YouTube pages. It's awesome. Third down and long, and Cam Brown's going to get brought down, but he got rid of the ball, trying to get it off to Christian Royalson, and we'll have to punt it away, and the offense stalls, and we'll go three and out. And punt it away, Riley Mason will do so. But how awesome is it that we have guys like Sal on the team here at UWG Productions doing the great work? You can't ask for anything better. Like you said, we're, we're at UWG Productions, they're doing everything for us, and they make our job easy, man. We got drone shots. We got content creators. We got all kinds of stuff. We just got to show up. Yeah. <laughs> Ball hits the 23 and will bounce inside the 10. And we'll keep it here as the ball lands at the 10 yard line. Great punt by Riley Mason. In the words of Shrek, that'll do, Donkey. <laughs> We're quote, quoting Shrek here in this one. That's Shemaya's favorite movie. I don't know if okay. it's, it's not my favorite movie, but I uh, definitely, I definitely like that movie. movie. Shrek is a really good movie, though. What is your favorite movie? Man, to be, to, to be honest. Right now, right now. Let's there's, right the, now. Uh, there's the code blue step, stomp, and shake tea. Now, that's above my pay grade. I can't do dances <laughs> like that. But you can dance with attitude. Oh, I can definitely dance with some attitude. Hand to, hand to Watkins' right side, and Jeremy Smith will make the stop. Good run by Watkins up to the 18-yard line. And here they are. I mean, UWG Productions getting all of our student organizations yes. and, and extracurricular guys involved. I mean, we've shown multiple different groups tonight on the broadcast. I mean, this, this college campus – and this college is just so tightly knit, more so than people think. Don't let the 12,000 students fool you. We are very tightly knit on this campus. Toss it out to Watkins, and we'll run him out of bounds. Jeremy, or that's Jordan Clark. I tell you what, Jordan Clark's had a really nice game tonight. Had the interception. Uh, he's made a couple of great plays in open Jordan space. Clark. He's put the seatbelt on. Yes, he's put the seatbelt on. Tonight. We're not going to be able to stop saying that. No, <laughs> that gummit. But, no, he's playing really good right now, Matt. Yeah, like just to feed, to feed off of you, um, he's just playing outstanding right Look now. Look at this young man. This is Sam Cheeks. He is one of our great content creators as well. We don't have just one. We got two tonight. We got three. We'll show you a third one here when we have a moment. So we got three content creators that are getting great stuff tonight. They'll hand it off. Up the middle he goes across the 23 to the 24-yard line. It'll be second down and seven. And that is Yavin Smith gets his first, second carry of the night. Have you been, you've been to North Greenville, haven't you? Yes, I've been North, North Greenville. Greenville? Yes, it's a played beautiful on. campus. It is a beautiful there. campus. And it basically sits on a hill. Yeah. Um, it's real Their beautiful baseball campus. stadium is Gorgeous. I need to see. I that. mean, the other side of we we, we kind of took a tour around campus last year. There's the stomp and shake team, Ben. <laughs> Something you can't do, like you said. I don't have a prayer for that. <laughs> I will end up on America's Funniest Home Videos. They'll throw it out to Smith. Caught it out of the backfield. Nice tackle by Jordan Clark, but it's good enough for a first oh, down across the 33 to the 35 yard line. And that's Kel Swift. I apologize. It's a zero, not an eight. It's a zero. So my apologies. Kel Swift, the last two. Uh, so we haven't seen the backup running back tonight, Yavin Smith, at all then. Yeah, we haven't. And and so, he's probably dealing with an injury yeah. or something like that. But their running backs have been oh, playing pretty good. Miscommunicate or a bad snap, and it calls for Ramirez to hand the ball off late. Keandre Williams and uh, – who was that, 38? Jalen Baker, or Jalen Brown. Brown. Jalen Brown burst through the line of scrimmage and made a great play behind the line, 
second and 12, but the snap and the, and the handling of the ball completely threw that off, and you'll see it here. Yep. Sometimes yeah. that's all it takes. Yeah, through that time. I mean, football is a game of inches and seconds. You know, it just takes one split second and mess up the entire play. Regardless, though, Jalen Brown was going to be there to, yes. meet, uh, to meet Watkins in the backfield. Second and 12, 223 counting on a third quarter clock. West Georgia leading 35 to 7. Ball out here to Amari Coates. But struggling to get him out of bounds, and we finally do at the 48 yard line. Micah Thurman making the stop for the Wolves, the sophomore out of Northside Warner Robins High School. And Crusaders get a first down to their own 48 yard line. Clock continuing to run at two minutes. As the homecoming crowd beginning to slowly but surely drift into the City of Dreams night. I think it's a little bit chillier than 65 degrees, my watch says. We'll hand off to Watkins. Greenville does to the midfield stripe, and there's Brian Rice doing some Ray Lewis stomping. <laughs> Kate, has it gotten colder down there? No, it, it's pretty comfortable down here. Why don't you stay up there in the press box <laughs> where you're, and look at your watch for the temperature? It's, it actually feels good out here. And you asked Kate if it's cold. Cold was the first home game we had. Uh, the, the, the last home game we yes. had. Yes. Handing it off up the middle to uh, Mays up the middle, a gain of eight. First down for North Greenville, they're starting to put together a couple of good first downs on this drive, and they've done that here in the second half. So first and 10, ball at the 42-yard line. There you see Deontay Overstreet. It's good to see Michael Merriweather back, getting back and playing a little bit more. He's been dealing with that knee injury. He dislocated his knee. It went in and out at the West Florida game and almost intercepted Amos Dyn. Almost picked it off. Ramirez has thrown some really close balls yes. tonight. We've had an opportunity. I know we've got one interception, but we've had an opportunity to pick off a couple. Yes, he, he's catching huge breaks right now, but Amos Dunn was so close. Right here, you look on, I think this is a replay. Yeah. Yes, and you can just see he's going to be so close to catching this pick. That really was a good job by the North Greenville offensive line. I always go and credit an offensive got line. To. They picked up a stunt. Uh, or what they call that, a switch. Yeah, that's uh, a stunt. A stunt yeah. uh, with, you got the terminology right. Uh, with uh, Keandre Williams there. Jalen Brown went out, and Keandre went inside and was able to stop him. They've got tripped receivers to the left. Ball is snapped, Ooh. and they're going to get a timeout before? What is it going to be? Prior to the snap, timeout. Ooh, Ooh good. That, that would have been ugly. That would have been a, a just would have sealed the entire game. So that's a timeout by North Greenville. They avoided uh, a, some major pressure right there and got lucky. Yes. Let's look at our final content creator real quick. We've got Miss Lauren down on the sideline taking some great shots. Great job by Lauren. I wouldn't know what to do with that camera. I'd be lost. And that's why I can she's edit, doing I can that. edit audio and video with the best of them, I feel like, but you put a camera in my hands, mm -hmm. I'm no good. You shut down. <laughs> shut you shut down. down. Yep. Great job by Lauren tonight. And we're getting closer and closer to getting that Jeep away. It's getting closer and closer to the field. It's almost not a new Jeep. It is a brand new Jeep, yeah. and I totally kid, but they have driven that Jeep all over the continental Carroll County, it seems <laughs> like. They have driven that thing everywhere to every – Wolf uh, luncheon. I mean, that's, that Jeep did, has gotten did, some miles on did it. Did you just say Continental <laughs> Carroll County? Yeah. Man, he said his his vocabulary is pretty high, so I'm just listening. Continental okay. Carroll County. Okay. <laughs> hey, Carroll County is the largest uh, county square miles wise. There's a flag, and they'll throw it out, and it's complete to Mays and to cross the 29. But it looks like it's going to come back, or we're going to have roughing the passer, one or the other. They got it off to Mays, and he ran it inside the 30 to the 29. Pick up a 14 if it stands. Ramirez seems to be hurt, so I think it's roughing the passer. Yeah. 
They are going to walk it off. I'm assuming you'll take the penalty, right? Or decline the penalty. It's the first down. It's insane. Yeah, it's just a yard difference. Hold it. Oh. On the defense, number 97. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is the first down. So I'm completely wrong. Uh, it is holding on Eric Williams. Was he trying? I wonder who he was holding. Maybe one of the offensive linemen for trying to go downfield and block. That's the only thing I can think of. Or he could have been. It was a screen, so he probably tried to hold the running back. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, if he held the running back, it was only for a split second. So that's a uh, technique that the D-line uses to hold up O-linemen on the screen. So that's what he did. That's what they called him, holding. Well, yeah. Eric Williams made up for it right there. He got off the ball and hit. Dylan Ramirez right as he threw and then took him down to the ground. And when you <laughs> when you got big Eric Williams running right at you at 6'4", 300 pounds, I'd be wanting to get rid of the ball pretty quickly, too. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that, that man should not be moving that fast. Oh, oh my goodness. Kay, did you see that? I was too busy saving cheerleader lives down here by letting them know that the ball was coming. <laughs> I'm a lifesaver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huge lifesaver down there, Cade. Bringing a man in motion. Second and ten. Fake it to Watkins. And Ramirez hurdles over uh, a, re a receiver. Then he, or a, uh, Deontay Overstreet and Jalen Brown. How about Jalen Brown? He's played his butt off here in the second half. Yes. They throw it away. And it will be third down and ten. But our defensive line is really getting some pressure right here in the last couple of plays. Yeah, Jalen Brown has played in an outstanding game. He's just another guy that you don't call as much, but he's always near the play if he's not making the play. Been seeing a couple of scores throughout. We talked about it a little bit before half, but uh, West Florida ended up getting the win over Delta 24-21. And now that sets up a huge game next week. West Florida and Valdosta at West Florida. Ramirez, third down and 10, completes it to the 23-yard line. Trey Douglas makes a great grab or great tackle at the 20-yard line. And decision time for Coach Jeff Farrington. As we head to the fourth quarter, it will be fourth and one. West Georgia, 35, North Greenville, 7. Timeout on the field. We'll be back right after this.
Fourth down and one. North Greenville going to go for it to start the fourth quarter, and they got it up the middle on a Corey Watkins two-yard run. It will be first down, North Greenville at the 19-yard line. The first and 10, 14-42 and counting here in quarter number four. Ball at the 19. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, tight right. And bringing a man in motion towards the line of scrimmage. And Ramirez will keep it left side. He's going to dive ahead across the 10 to the 9, and it will be first and goal, Crusaders at the 9-yard line. Ramirez has had some success running the football tonight. After that run, he's got, I believe, 56 yards. He had 10 carries for 46, or he had nine for 46 before that one. That was a gain of 10, so first and 10. For Ramirez and the Crusaders, they sent quads out to the left. They're going to hand it to Corey Watkins on the right side, and Eric Williams makes a great tackle. And we'll have a late flag thrown in by the referee. And I believe it's going to be, we're pointing that it's holding, but I've been wrong a couple of times. You could be right right now. There's always a chance, man. Well, Brian Rice is pointing the other way. The question is, do you want second and goal from the nine, or do you want to back it up? I personally will back him up. Yes, yeah, oh, back it up. Yeah. Yeah. The time Ten yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. So there's the referee, Brian Detweiler, get, telling us it's going to be a holding. Man, Eric Williams. He laid a hit. He definitely laid a hit on that running back. And now they'll run some clock. 13 minutes and 42 seconds to go. Two receivers to each side. Watkins standing beside Dylan Ramirez. Four down lineman for the Wolves. They will toss or fake the toss. Throw it out here to Williams on a screen set up to perfection. Keandre Williams saves a touchdown from behind and tackles him at the two yard line. What a save by Keandre Williams. If not, it's then he Dre Williams walks into the end zone. Yes, that was a good play, um, good play call by the head coach and offense coordinator because he really had the Wolves full. They'll hand it to Watkins up the middle, and I believe he is in. Touchdown, Crusaders. Another good answer by North Greenville. Nice drive by the Crusaders. It'll be an 18 or 19 play drive for North Greenville. I don't think I've ever been on a 19 play drive. Well, well oh that was goodness. an 18. Yeah, that was a 19 play drive. That don't seem right. That don't seem right, especially for the offensive line because they get no substitutions. We do have a flag. Field goal was up and in good, but. I think we jumped. Yeah. That's been the going rate tonight. Uh, on the defense, number seven. The penalty is declined. The result is the point after is good. This is a media timeout. So we'll head to our media timeout with 12.59 to go here in quarter number four, and we will see Corey Watkins running in from two yards out. Great shot on UWG Productions. Wolves lead the Crusaders 35-14. or hall are you with? I'm a freshman and I'm with University Suites. We're a -B -A -B -A -L. <laughs> I'm here with the Villages, the Kappa Alpha Order. The one and only all review. How has your experience been at uh, Battle of the Hall so far? It's been good, very loud, love the spirit. Listen, the energy is high and 
and it is crazy out here. So if you haven't been, you got to make sure you come. It's been good. We just won that last game. Oh my gosh, it was so crazy. All right, and what event were you guys just doing just now? So we just did a tug of war. Yeah. Yeah, it got a little heated, and they were pulling, and then the rope just snapped. It was it was crazy. Can you show us the evidence right there? Yeah. So. <laughs> <clears throat> um, this is half of the rope. You know, it was a lot of alpha male energy over there. Um, we didn't expect that. We were just running it back, but you know, we just too strong. We lift. Welcome to the pack. 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 Twelve fifty nine to go, fourth quarter, 35-14. Here comes the kickoff with Wesley Kennedy and LP back deep uh, to kick it off, Colin Carew to do so. The band played a little cuff it by Beyonce <laughs> during, the, during the UWG production's timeout. Kennedy from his own one, getting a block and jumping across the 20 and up to the 23 yard line. It'll be first to 10 West Georgia. Speaking on that Beyonce, that was really nice. I'm glad they played that. <laughs> Gave us some new, new flavor. Yeah, Dr. Self and the band do phenomenal work. I got to get me one of his blue blazers. I need a blue blazer. I have a blue blazer. You do? I was a blue coat. Oh. <laughs> well, dude, for the Delta game, I need to find a way to get a blue blazer. If I can't just go to the Squire Shop and borrow one, we'll wear them. Okay. We can, we maybe, can do that. I maybe look more presentable well, for the camera. Well, I don't think you're I can wear my blue blazer because it's <laughs> You're not going to find very many blue blazers on racks. <laughs> Hands off to a Sean Robertson in the game across the 25 to the 30, maybe the 29 yard line is where they'll put it. And they'll run him out of bounds at the Jalen Day or Jalen Davis will run him out of bounds at the 29 yard line. It's good to see a shy back because you know he was he's been battling a hamstring yeah. injury, so it's good to see him back to give a lot of our running backs breaks. They send him back behind Cam Brown. They'll hand it off to him right side. Good push by the offensive line, and Ashad will get some good yardage. Another four or five yard pickup to the 34 yard line. First down, West Georgia. And I want to give a quick shout out. I know he's listening to our good friend Mitch Gray, yes. uh, who just got out of the hospital uh, this past week. And Mitch, we've been we love you, man. We're praying for you, and so happy that you got to come to the game tonight at homecoming. He was here earlier tonight, and. Uh, I know he hated missing Hall of Fame Saturday last week, yes. but our good friend Mitch Gray, longtime SID here in the Voice of the Wolves for 40 years. I mean, uh, Cam Brown rolling out to his left will toss and connect to Marquise Bridges at the 40, across the 40 to the 45-yard line, and gently tossed out of bounds by <laughs> Ryan Cheatham over on that left side. But well, I know you probably had plenty of conversations with Mitch over the yeah, years. Yeah, man, back to Mitch Gray. He... He's a guy that truly loved every single athlete and knew everything yep. about every single athlete. So He probably could tell you every yes. single stat you ever had in high school. He probably could. <laughs> and, and so just want to give a shout-out to me. It's great, man. I truly love you, and I'm just glad you're doing better, okay? They'll fake it to a shot. Robinson Camp stays on his feet and will drag a Crusader for two yards, but – Cam has done a great job tonight, and this just the growth, right? Yes. Of turning a really possibly bad play into a manageable play. You got two yards when you should have probably lost five or possibly fumbled. Look at this instant replay right here. He should have been brought down from behind and kept his footing and stayed forward there, Ben. Yes, you get, that's why you love a quarterback like Cam that can make plays with his feet because he can get you out of a lot of deep situations. Keontae Skinner and Steven Peterson in tight on the left side. Trey Williams 
out down here to the right along. It looks like Zay Britt, maybe. Keontae Skinner comes across the formation. Brown looking to throw. He's got a deep ball, throwing it long. Keontae Skinner, and it hung up there forever, and it's intercepted. But they're going to bail us out. We're going to have a pass interference. So take the interception off the board for number eight, Kendrick Clark, and it will be pass interference. That's a spot right? On the defense, number 27. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. You're thinking of NFL rules. You're thinking of NFL, yeah, I'm sorry. It is a 15-yard penalty, Not which I think the NFL needs to get rid of that yeah, too because technically if you're at your people. own 20-yard line and you throw it 70 yards and there's pass interference, they put it right where it happened. Yeah, so, yeah, that's definitely NFL flag and if, if they do need to take that away because that definitely saves a lot of teams in certain situations. And, man, if I'm I'm Kendrick Clark, I'm very upset with my other guy right there. They'll fake it to Kennedy right side, and Cam's going to run. Juke move. It's Cam to the 30 and knocked out of bounds at the 26-yard line by DeLavon Donald, one of the top linebackers in the Gulf South Conference. But Cam with a great run near a first down marker. And it's going to be third down, or uh, first down, or second down. Gosh, it's one of the downs. I got <laughs> four chances. I get it on the third try. Don't be so hard on yourself, Matt. You know, just, uh, just get it out. Well, hey, speaking of, Georgia Lottery, one of our sponsors for West Georgia, third, three out of four, had a 25% chance of getting it right. <laughs> I mean, it just took me the third try to get it. 9.46 and counting, second and one. We'll run quarterback uh, kind of a power play off left side and get four yards and a first down to the 23-yard line. Nine twenty-seven and counting. The clock is our best friend right now. And we're going to be keeping up with this offense in the rushing yard numbers. We are up to 240 yards rushing tonight. I think the last time we had that many yards was against Mississippi College, if I'm correct. Probably correct. Snap. Hand to Kennedy. Left side. He's pushing it out left with a stiff arm and will be run out of bounds near the 21-yard line. Two yards on the carry. So 8.53 and counting here in the fourth quarter. 35-14, Wolves trying to score one more time here in the ball game. Let's go, Wolves. Let's go. We really need to get Kane to interview that lady. And I wish I, want to hear I could from hear her now because you're hearing everything. <laughs> Off to Kennedy. Left side, 15. Kennedy. Oh, he went down kind of gingerly. He tried to make a cut back to inside, and he lost his footing. But, hey, we'll take a nine-yard run and a first down, and he stays in bounds. I know whose mother that is, and I'm not going to say. <laughs> not only do I know whose mother that is, but everyone on the sidelines does. <laughs> So that means everybody in the stands might know, too. <laughs> it, I think everybody knows but me. Two receivers down to the left. One of the right is Keontae Skinner, 753 and counting. Man in motion, Trey Williams. He'll stop behind right guard. They'll hand to Wesley Kennedy. He spins inside like he's at the wash bowl in downtown and gets to the 12. And we got some... Curriculars, extracurricular activities. West Georgia looking for a score right here, which will, they have tied their career high in points uh, for the season. Season high, not career high. Season high in points at 35. We scored 35 last week against Chawan, and we scored 35 points against Mississippi College, and that well, seems to be the problem. I don't think they like our drone. They're not used to drones in the Gulf South Conference. There's a drone in the field area. It needs to be removed from the field area before we can continue play. Oh. It's so getting right. up out of here, too. Thank you. Well, we've had the drone all year long. Yeah, we've had it. That's how we get our plays, too. Well, whoever is operating the drone, <laughs> 
<laughs> we are removing the drone from the field of play. <laughs> I've never heard of that before because a lot of teams. Well, in the in, in Georgia high school football, you can't have a drone at all. Okay. Like they are really, really strict. And there's our drone. We're away from the field. Getting We're definitely not in the view. field to play. Not at all. As we hand it off to Wesley Kennedy inside the 10 or down to the 11 yard line. So it'll be second down or it's third down now. We were scared. That referee's still looking up at the sky. He's trying to find the drone again. And it's, 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 it's over the tailgate <laughs> he's, now. He's, he's still looking at the sky, trying to find that drone. Oh, man, it's nowhere near the playing surface, I promise. Trips to the left, two receivers to the right. Third down ball just inside, in between the 12 and the 11. Send Marquise Bridges in motion. We're fake it, throw it out top to Wesley Kennedy. Just overthrow him. We had Steven Peterson open on the slant inside, but Cam wanted to throw the, the fade route to Kennedy. It was there, just did not connect, and we will see Tyler Davalos try to put a field goal up for us. So Tyler Davalos will get an opportunity to kick a 29-yard field goal. First field goal of the night too, Matt. Correct. So Reed Reagan will snap it, Hogan will hold it, and Davalos will try to put his right foot into it and add to the lead. Kick is away, it is up, and it is good. With 6.20 to play here in the fourth quarter, Wolves lead the Crusaders 38-14 back after this. And here's the most beautiful shot of the night. This live drone shot is courtesy of the UWG's Department of Digital Experiences. Digital Experiences has taken the University of West Georgia to new heights in the areas of production and technology. Led by Corey Spates and production engineer Matt Cash, UWG can now connect and produce the highest level of broadcast anywhere on the campus from the master control room inside the UWG Coliseum. This technology connects over the university's enterprise network, providing unlimited and cost-efficient flexibility. Basically, guys, this drone is so cool, it stopped play to remove it. You can't ask for a better I mean, drone. I mean, come on. I have comments <laughs> about the drone situation, and all I'm going to say is thank goodness we're going Division One. <laughs> <laughs> What were the were the comments good or bad? It had to be bad if you didn't if you didn't want to comment. I'm going to keep them to myself. <laughs> well, I love the drone love shot. I think it puts us over the top. Great work. No, it's nothing negative no. against oh, the drones. Oh, oh. It's against the uh, referees. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> end over end kick inside the ten, and that's where it will be. Uh, fair call. All right, so they'll put it out at the 25. I guess he wanted no part of yeah. Marcus Gary. Look at my man Marcus. Marcus like, you're scared. <laughs> I'm pointing at him. <laughs> Look at Festus Davies. He's pointing at him too. He had like 20 <laughs> yards before he anybody got to him. He had at least 20 yards of room to run. Wow. Uh, I don't think I've that's, – that's a sign because Coach Dean always tells us that's a sign of physical football from West Georgia yeah. today. Well, North Greenwood will take back over, but we've had a great time tonight on UWG Productions. There's Wolfie.
dancing and talking with some great kids in the stands. And I tell you what, uh, I'm looking forward to shouting out our great crew tonight. We have had a very great broadcast. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's always fun when you, you're winning, too. Yes, it makes things fun. more enjoyable. And these guys continue to get better each and every week. Ramirez looking to throw. Ramirez now going to take off Ooh. and run. And, my goodness, Trey Loveless eats him up along with Jeremy Smith. Yikes. That was a huge hit by, by Trey Lovelace. Oh, my goodness. Trey Lovelace, the pride of Buchanan, Georgia, as Nick White would say, or Buchanan, Georgia. Don't call it Buchanan or you will get hurt. I've never heard anybody say Buchanan. <laughs> so that was the first. I was about to ask you, where, where is he from? You've never thought, heard a lot of sayings <laughs> Coach Nick White says. <laughs> Second and ten. Here comes Ramirez to throw, and it gets it off to number 89 around the 29. And Aiden Brantley, the freshman wideout, will get it to the 30, and it'll be third down and five. So trips out to the right, one receiver to the left. Ramirez with uh, Kel Swift. What a great running back name, Kel Swift. Yes. I mean, just... Obviously, DeAndre Swift. But. That's NFL. Let's just stick yeah. to this. Because, you know, <laughs> Kel Swift is a good name. Man. So, shout out to Kel Smith. Swift. 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 Swift Lee. And they throw it out to this Swift guy. This is number two, Dre Williams. And it gets across to midfield. A gain of 20. And here come the Crusaders again. They won't back down. And that's just on their coach, Jeff Farrington. They're not going to They're not gonna quit. And that's how North Greenville has always been. They're never going to just lay down. They're going to keep fighting until that clock stays zero. Two receivers to each side. Ramirez and Swift back there in the backfield. Four down lineman for the Wolves. Ramirez looking, steps up, going to dump it off to Swift at the 45, running sideways now to the 43. And Jeremy Smith made another great stop for the Wolves. He's played well here tonight. And it will be second down and three. We've been calling a lot of names that and people have been playing good, but just shout out to the entire Wolves team. They've played a com right now a complete football game from what we've seen all season, man. Second down and three to go. Two receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Snap, Ramirez looking to throw, looking, steps up, going to throw a deep ball. Carson Yancey in coverage. Good single man coverage out there by Carson Yancey. The sophomore from Auburn, Alabama, did a great job in coverage. The receiver it was Dre Williams, and it's going to be third down and three. So third down, got to get off the field right here. Well, there's four down territory, so at least two more plays. Th uh, third and three, rolling to his right. Ramirez going to throw it out to a receiver, called at the 37, and run out of bounds at the 31-yard line. First down, West or first down North Greenville. Ball at the 31-yard line, 333 and counting. Clock is in our favor with the Wolves leading 38 to 14. Would love to keep them off the board. One more time here. First and 10 Crusaders trips to the left. One receiver to the right. Looking is Ramirez. Looking, got hit from behind, but steps up in the pocket. Going to throw across, and it's complete. Huge hit by Michael Merriweather. But the catch was made by number five, Amari Coates. First down. Mercer, run, Malcolm Mercer running off the field. They're trying to help him off. Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm just pushes Brian Rice out of the way. So they can get off on the field of my own. Mason Huntley almost had a sack there on the UWG Productions instant replay. Ramirez looking to throw, and the pocket will collapse, and down he goes. All three or four Wolves, Demetrius Lofton, Trey Loveless, Jalen Miller, all three of them in on the stop. And Loveless is a little shaken up. So we're going to have a 
Their second charge, timeout in the half. So, timeout, North Greenville. We will keep it here. And let's take this time while we have a break in the action to go ahead and look at the uh, upcoming schedule for the Wolves. It's going to be a short week for us, Ben. Uh, I'm going to stop and pick you up on the way going to Temple unless we get our good friend Cade Perry and we'll, we'll come up with a different solution. Okay. But we're going to head to Shorter let's do it. on Thursday. Looking forward to that. Did you just insinuate that and, uh, I'm going to be your chauffeur? <laughs> I'll take well, it. listen, I volunteered to drive, but you refused to ride with me. I will never ride with you again. Thank you. What happened? I'm just not a good driver. I'm oh, the first. It's a mix of Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, <laughs> and Crash Bandicoot. Hey, can you come get me? I'll yes, drive myself. It, trust me, it's safe. Regardless, either if he comes with us, he will be driving more than likely. If not, you'll have to ride with me. Nonetheless, we'll be going to Shorter on Thursday night, and then we'll – get to come back home and thankfully not go to Delta because yes. we know that's a long ride. Oh, boring. <laughs> Nothing but fields. And then, of course, oh. that team down south the following week. Yes. And we'll look at North Greenville's here in just a second. Second down and 14 after the sack. They'll complete it out to the right. Ramirez that is Carson Yancey. Moss. 38 to 14, your score. Uh, the waning minutes of the clock winding down, two minutes and eight seconds. And Amari Coates with a grab, and it will be third down and ten. Ball inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. Takes the snap. Ramirez looking, looking, still looking. Going to loft it up for a receiver and knocked away. I don't know if it would have been in bounds, but great play. I trying to put my glasses on because I think that was number 39. It was 39. Thank you. Yo, Brandon Booker. Right on, right on cue. My UWT production folks just saving the day again. Yeah, th that's why they're amazing. Yeah. We just got to show up. Well, I say I'm going to bring my binoculars and I forget every week. Every week. It's been, it's been <laughs> like that since we came from Kingsville. Every single week. I brought them to Kingsville, but I didn't need them at Kingsville. We were sweating too much. They, would have fogged <laughs> they, up. Were, fo they were fogging up, so it wasn't like I could use them. Big fourth down, fourth in the ball game here. And I think Coach Farrington knows that. And North Greenville will take a timeout. Timeout. North Greenville, their third and final charge. And timeout. we will take a look at North Greenville's schedule. They just have two games left. Uh, they will be off. Um, the final week of the season. So they'll play Mississippi College next week at home and then shorter the following week. A 2 o'clock game and a 1 o'clock game. You want to talk about a long trip, Mississippi College to North Greenville. That is a long road to hoe. That is, what you think, about 12 hours? That's a, that's By bus? Most definitely. Yeah, and it, I wonder how, where are they going to take? Uh, they can go through I'm, Atlanta. I'm hoping they're probably going to go to Atlanta. I probably drive to Atlanta or drive somewhere to South Carolina at least. Oh. Well, 38 to 14, your score. Wolves are going to get out of here with a win unless we just see just something amazing happen. Ball is at the 18 yard line. They've got to get down to it to the eight to keep this game alive. And if not, the West Georgia. Wolves will get out of here with a win, which I think is their most complete game. I think you've talked to Coach Dean. Yes, he wants a little bit better production out of the offense in the second half, but you play when you play, it's different playing with a lead. Yes, I mean, it, it it's is. a different it, mindset. Yeah, it's, a, it's different playing with a lead, and it just gives you more more time to try certain plays and try certain players in the game too as well uh, when you're up like this. So here we go, fourth and ten. Snap, Ramirez looking, looking across the middle, tipped up in the air, and oh, Xavier Robinson and Kel Bright both had chances to intercept it. Couldn't hold on to it, and Jalen Tarver's like, come on, man, you had a chance. You could have had you a pick. <laughs> he pushes him again. And I think Coach Dorman's giving them a hard time, too. That's their coach. Man, 
So 1.39 to go. Here you'll see the replay one last time across the middle, tipped up in the air. Oh, Xavier, come oh. on. Yeah, Coach Dorman's not going to let that, <laughs> let, let him have, have that. That's going to be a lot of fun in that room because if anybody knows Coach Dorman, he is a guy that can get real loose, and that's one, that's one position coach that you just would love to have. So here we go. Uh, we'll have Eli Ganey take the field and J.B. Carlisle in the game. J.B. going to get a carry more than likely here. And they'll hand it off to Carlisle, right side. He'll cut back across the grain to the 25. JB 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. JB Carlisle 40, 35, 30. And run out of bounds at the 25 yard line. JB Carlisle. Hey, way to go, JB. The running back room is stacked. You just see so many different kinds of playing styles in that running back room. Just Great job by J.B. Carlisle. Shout out to him, man. Guy out of Oxford, Alabama. Have you seen Oxford, Alabama's new indoor facility they just built? I didn't know It's they had beautiful. One. They just put it in. Wow. Very, very nice. Very, very nice facility. West Georgia has a nice little pipeline of folks and players from the Alabama area, that Birmingham to Oxford area. Snap, we'll hand it to Carlisle one more time, up the middle, across the 20 to the 18, 17 yard line. How about him? J.B. Carlisle might be our second leading rusher after this drive, and he's got two carries. What was that, like almost a 60 yard game for the first one? He got 56 50? on the first one. Over a minute to go, he got eight yards on that last run, second and eight. Yeah, him and Cam Brown are going to be tied for rushing yards. <laughs> receiver to each side. There are two receivers to the right. West Georgia will snap it one last time. We'll hand to Carlisle. Cuts back to the left. Carlisle across the 15, and we'll get a first down to the 14-yard line, and that will do it. Uh, hopefully we'll sit on it here, take a knee, and get out of here. Cam Brown, 11 to 19 tonight, 142 yards and two touchdowns. Just enough to get the win tonight, but we were able to run the ball. We are over 300 yards rushing. When was the last time That's, that happened? Well, funny you should ask. The last time we ran for 300 yards was Limestone, 2019. Ooh. Here's J.B. Carlisle. Carlisle across the 10 to the nine. Keeping adding up the running, the rushing yards. The last time we did it was 2019 at Limestone. That's when old Chauncey Williams had a, a game. But there you go. Final score, Wolves 38, North Greenville 14. Great win tonight for Coach David Dean and the West Georgia Wolves. There you see Jet Lee doing his, his weekly backflips at the 20. It just hurts me. Hurts me to see that. <laughs> Does it hurt your joints or it just hurts you in general? Both. Because <laughs> I don't want to lose him. Not saying they, I mean, he's very athletic. He can obviously do it. But looking at Cade and finding Coach Dean. And Cade's trying to get him now. Coach Dean shaking everybody's hand. Now Cade is having to track him down. He's at the 40. He's at the 35. And I think Coach is just trying to shake one last hand. And there he goes. <laughs> coach Steve will sit it down to Cade right now. Running you down there, Coach. Well, good thing we got a, <laughs> we got a big lead in the first half and we were able to keep it in the second half. Things to, things to build upon for next week. Yeah, it is. You know, we'll uh, we'll watch this film in the second half and make these corrections. I, I wish we'd have played as, as well in the second half as we did in the first half. But I'll take a win any way we can get it. We need one. We needed a game like this where we got a big lead to see how our guys were going to respond, and now we know. How about Rajay's Mosley tonight and the rest of that running back room? How about him, man? He is so he runs so hard, and he, he he's just such a such a dream for us. And uh, I hope he keeps playing the way he's he, he's playing right now because he's playing at a different level. All right, thank you, Coach. Go Wolves. 
Thank you to Cade Perrion and uh, Ben Walters. Great work. I got to give a shout out to our entire crew real quick. Do I have time to give a shout out to our entire crew? Perfect. Shemaya Pittman, our great producer, Alicia Lee, our technical director, Jayla Cochran, our replay operator, Mikhail Blackwell on graphics and stats. Our camera operators are Jordan, Carter, Dylan, Oliver, and Joy. Our audio operator was Tyler Davis. Ashley Sinthevonsa was our audio operator here at the stadium. Lauren O'Brien, Sal were our content creators. He had one more content creator. Want to hear who that was real quick. Matt. And Matt Cash was our uh, production and broadcast engineer. And of course, Corey Spates, our great director. So great work. Final thoughts real quick, Ben. Man, honestly, what I can say is there's a great job by the Wolves on all phases of the game. Special teams play amazing. Defense, like usual, played outstanding. And the offense put a lot of things together. Still not complete, to the, to, but we're going in the right direction. Yeah. That's all I got to say right now for you, man. Next broadcast on UWG Productions for football will be on Saturday, November the 4th at 6 o'clock with Delta State right here at University Stadium. We'll be back on the road next Thursday at Shorter. Looking forward to that. Thank you to our entire crew tonight for Cade Perry on the sideline, for Ben Walters here in the studio. I'm Matt Skinner reminding you guys to do your best and let God do the rest. Have a great night, everybody. Stay safe on the way home and a great homecoming victory for your West Georgia Wolves.